Saturday night at Doug Kingsborough, Clemson rallied from 2-0 down to force extra innings, but in the top half of the 13, Stephen Wells, his fifth home run of the season, snapping the deadlock. Florida State led 3-2, dodged a bullet in the bottom half of inning number 13, and route to the one-run victory and a milestone for their longtime head coach, Mike Martin. He becomes the all-time leader in NCAA baseball wins, his 1,976. Now we get ready for game two in the series, coming up. It's the ACC on ESPN, a beautiful Sunday afternoon for baseball here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. A top 15 battle once again, the Florida State Seminoles against the Clemson Tigers. Tigers sitting in first place in the ACC Atlantic Division on a windy day at Doug Kingsmore. They hope to get things going back in the right direction after having their eight-game winning streak snapped and a seven-game ACC run stop. But NC State playing outside of the conference this weekend, so they can't impact things in the standing. Tigers lead over third place Florida State. Now at two games, and Clemson trying to also overtake North Carolina for the best conference record in the regular season overall. Hi, friends, and welcome back in with Kyle Parker, Pete Hannity with you. So Tigers will try to get things going back in the right direction. Florida State, of course, can clinch the series with a win, but both teams have to deal with the fact that they played 13 innings pretty late last night, and now they have to turn around for a mid-afternoon game. And a lot of bonus baseball yesterday. It's going to come down to hitting with runners in scoring position. Both teams left a lot of runs out on the base, so if they swing it well today, whoever does is going to be victor. Yeah, the team's coming through just twice in the clutch last night, and those kind of games happen and end up going 13 because of that. And once again, a Clemson team that coming into the series has been doing some good things with the bats, but you just kind of got the feeling last night it just wasn't their night uh, managing just six hits in the game. And it was tough. You had a great pitching performance, and you got to look at the bullpen. You had Miller and Gilliam going pretty deep in the game yesterday, so look for Clemson to have a, a need a good starting uh, pitching performance. So let's take a look at the Florida State batting orders. They get set to come up here in the top half of inning number one. Wells, the hero last night with that 13th inning homer, leads off in right field. Well, Jackson Luke bats second in left field. Red Apple in the first baseman at third. Cal Raleigh in the cleanup slot behind the plate. Drew Mendoza, the leading hitter on the team at third base, hits fifth. Nick Durr, the second baseman, hits sixth. Mike Salvatore, the shortstop, the seven-hole hitter. Jared Heron getting the start today as a designated hitter. And Reese Albert, the freshman center fielder, had a big night. His home run of the seventh inning gave Florida State a 2-0 lead before the Tigers rallied with a run in the seventh and a run in the eighth. Defensively for the Tigers, Jolly Wharton and Beer from left to right in the outfield. Injury issues continuing for Kier Meredith. And, of course, Bryce Teodosio is out for a while with a shoulder injury. Cromwell Davidson Hall will get the start at second base today. He started in left field last night. Williams the first. Kyle Wilkie behind the plate. And Brooks Crawford on the hill. And the Tiger Jr. right hander about to make his third career appearance against the Seminoles. No decisions in his first two outings against them over the past couple of years. He's allowed four hits against Florida State and one earned run while getting a strikeout. This is his 12th start of the season, a 5-2 and two mark for a guy who's begun to stretch things out a little bit, although he comes off a performance last Saturday at Virginia when he got the win but went just five innings. And pitching deep in the game hasn't really been the strong suit for Crawford, but like you said, Pete, as of late, he's been pretty efficient, and you can tell his arms livening up. It's all about just throwing strikes and getting heading counts. Opponents hitting 252 this season against Crawford. Stephen Wells, who came into this series on a hot streak, but when he came to the plate last night in the 13th inning, he was working on an 0 for 6 night. But that home run probably helped ease some of the anguish from his earlier plate appearances in the game. Senior out of Key West. A big swing of the bat last night. Got a fastball up in the zone and was on time. He saw the pop. He hit that ball a well of the ways up in the bleachers in left field. And consecutive strikes to start things out for Crawford. You're going to see Crawford throw this fastball. He has some two-seam action. He wants to pitch for ground balls. Did he go? The tag by Wilkie. The appeal to first. And yes, indeed, that is a strikeout to start things out. 33rd on the season registered by Crawford. The Tigers pitching staff last night coming up with a dozen Ks against the Seminoles. And a good slider. Right where he wants to throw this. He gets Wells to chase. Hey. 
in those five innings against Virginia as Jackson Luke, the left fielder, steps in off a one for five night on Saturday evening. But Crawford's five inning effort in the win last Saturday in Charlottesville, he allowed five hits, four runs, just two of them were earned, no walks and three strikeouts. So the control has been very good for him as well as the others in this Tigers starting rotation. Just 12 walks allowed coming into today. Hit deep to right, way back with the wind blowing out, and that one is out of here. And Florida State striking early. Jackson Luke, their leader in home runs, hits his 11th of the season, and it's 1-0. And that ball was tattooed pretty good on top of the batting cages in right field. And it's a good day for swinging the bat. You have the wind blowing out. He definitely didn't miss this one. Third homer in the series for Florida State as a team. They've really been on quite a run. It's their 49th and this is their 47th game. However, that's their 42nd home run now in their past 31 ball games. So they've picked up the power and their head coach Mike Martin saying it's kind of the byproduct just of the weather getting warmer. Not only in Tallahassee where they like other places including here have kind of had a rough spring in terms of the temperatures but when they were in Winston-Salem playing, it was cold. They had to go up to New England and play at Boston College. So he thinks really it's a matter of just the weather warming up. They're playing these afternoon games. The sun's out. The wind's blowing. It just seems like the conditions are right for hitting. Red Applin. Good ball game on Saturday night. Scored their first run in the sixth inning. When he had a double that was followed by a Cal Raleigh single. Beer backing up in right. Again, battling a wind that is blowing out, as you noticed earlier when we showed you those flags in right center. And that's out number two here in the top half of inning number one. So here is Cal Raleigh, the junior catcher. Five with a couple of singles and RBI in the ball game last night. A year ago, we had a good series in Tallahassee against the Tigers. Four out of 11 with a homer. Raleigh takes a fastball on the inside corner. And the count evens at one and one. Raleigh today starting his 171st consecutive game. His 168th in that stretch at catcher. And you know how durable you've got to be just to play that position on a somewhat regular basis. So okay. he has been an Iron Man to say the least. One and two. Crawford would love to close this thing out right now with a second strikeout in the opening inning. He'll have to wait another pitch. And you see Crawford working in on the hands of Raleigh. Probably a big guy who can drive the ball. He wants to get his arms extended. Monty Lee hoping to see his team bounce back. That one's ripped to deep right center field, and that one is going to sail out of here over that building behind right center. I'm not so sure the wind had anything to do with that. And Cal Raleigh, the second solo homer for Florida State here in the first, his eighth of the season, and it's 2 nothing. And a good piece of hitting from Raleigh. Crawford makes a mistake with this fastball, just has too much of the plate, and Raleigh does not miss it. Driving this ball deep out to right center field. Two solo home runs allowed by Crawford here in the opening inning. Now six home runs given up by the Tigers righty on the season. And obviously the Last thing he would want is to be a leader in that category in the staff, but those two allowed now put him there as far as home runs given up and another tough guy to face and one batting from the left side of the plate. Drew Mendoza, the sophomore third baseman. And he just misses with his fastball on both home runs. They catch too much of the plate and good swings by these Florida State hitters. Well, the good news is the Tigers get to hit into that same wind and uh, this Clemson team has been on a home run run of its own albeit not hitting one out of the park last night but as we noted in the ball game on Saturday Clemson starting the weekend 68 home runs as a team tied for third nationally with Florida and just one homer behind Arkansas 
count goes to two and one on Mendoza who in the ball game Saturday the guy who was their only 300 plus hitter coming into the game went one for six. But he's a nice job corralling a hard grounder by Chris Williams that he turned into a 5 4 3 double play at a key point in the ball game. Two two. Count goes full. And a good job by Mendoza laying off this high fastball. Like you mentioned, Pete, this Florida State offense is pretty selective. You don't see them chasing outside of the zone too often. The team they came in hitting 260, and Crawford able to get the swing and miss his second strikeout of the inning, and that closes it out for the Seminoles in the top half of the first. But two runs on two hits, solo homers by Jackson Luke and Cal Raleigh. So Florida State trying to make it two straight here at Doug Kingsmore, a two nothing lead with the Tigers coming to bat. As you see the wind blowing out in right center field here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium, Florida State a couple of runs in the top half of the first. Clemson coming up for the first time. Let's give you Monty Lee's batting order as the Tigers try to start another winning streak after having their third eight-game run of the season snapped last night. Logan Davidson, the switch hitting shortstop again in the leadoff spot. Kyle Wilkie at cleanup last night. They moved the hottest hitter on the team into the two-hole. Seth Beer drops down back into the third slot in right field. Chris Williams, the RBI and home run leader on the ball club. It's cleanup at first. Grayson Bird, the DH for the game today, hitting fifth. Cromwell, the third baseman, hits sixth. Drew Wharton in center field, bat seventh. Sam Hall playing second today and batting eighth. And Robert Jolly, the left fielder, will hit in the nine hole today. And a Tiger team going against the Florida State Ball Club that has had some issues up the middle defensively this year. And they had a key error out of Nick Durr in that 13th inning last night that had a replay call uh, gone a different way. The Tigers might have been able to walk him off, but Luke, Albert, and Wells from left to right in the outfield. Mendoza, Salvatore, Durr, and Applin in the infield. Raleigh again behind the plate. And Andrew Karp, a right-hander and a fourth-year junior out of Winter Garden, Florida, went to West Orange High School. First appearance against Clemson, and on the season, with those seven wins, that's a pretty good number to have, especially as he's making just his 12th start of the year. He's had good stuff. You see the 74 strikeouts. And the 13 walks, a pretty good ratio. He's facing this Tiger offense who has been hot as of late. One of the hottest hitters, Logan Davidson. And Davidson first pitch swinging. Skies it. Center field got under a little bit. And that one, a bit of a challenge it looked like for Reese Albert for out number one. So one pitch and one away here in the home first. And it can be one of those... Tough kind of days you played in this outfield before, Kyle, when the wind's swirling around. When the wind's blowing this hard, it kind of impairs your judgment. You have to stay back. Your normal reads and jumps you have on balls can be a little tricky. You see the gusts out to left center field. Look for these outfielders to be playing deep and let the balls come to them. Kyle Wilkie extended the hitting streak to 12 in a row last night. Takes a breaking ball on the outer half. And we saw this a lot from Parrish yesterday, but Carp throwing his breaking ball for a strike early in the count. It seems to be the memo from these Florida State pitchers. And now make it a 13 game hitting streak. Boy, he is red hot. I really like him hitting in the two hole in this lineup. I think it's perfect because he's making such great contact. And he's hitting about 430 during this hitting streak. He's super locked in. Here gets the breaking ball, just drives it right back up the middle. You see the confidence. He's not searching for contact, but rather selecting good pitches and putting the ball in play. Seth Beer hopefully, hoping to quickly avenge what was a rough Saturday night for him. 0 for 6. He did reach on that Durr error in the 13th, but three strikeouts on the night. Florida State pitchers with 15 Ks in last night's contest. And the average better than 10 strikeouts per nine innings. We've seen some big strikeout totals this year in some of the games here at Doug Kingsmore. Last night, the team's combining for 27. And beer ahead of the count, 2 0. Raleigh going to have a visit with him. And, you know, they started a lefty parish last night. Now, granted, it was the righty Van Eyck who ended up pitching six and a third innings. He went the same distance as the starter Parrish did, but. He did not seem to have too much trouble facing beer, but 
Again, Carp, the right hander. Beer has got to be a dangerous guy to see right there. And that's the for strike one. Carp started last Sunday against Miami, ended up getting a no decision. He struck out two batters in the first inning, but he lasted just an inning and a third because suddenly illness overcame him when he was out there in the second inning. So they got him out of there, and it's just kind of been a week that hasn't been typical. It's kind of been getting over that, hasn't done the typical bullpen work. And evens the count here at two and two as Deer fouls it away. But I'm sure Carp's happy to be back on the mound. It seems like his velocity is up to where it usually is. Now you just have to start locating these pitches. Seth Beer is a guy who has the potential to get hot, probably not swinging it as good as he would like to right now, but a guy that's always has a star, your eye on him in a lineup. 2-2. Two -two. And the count is full. Wilkie the runner at first has one stolen base this season as many attempts. You wonder if they may have a moving here with one out. On a full count pitch. Yeah, possibly just to stay out of a double play. If you have confidence on Seth Beer putting the ball. And there he goes, and that's ball four. So Seth Beer draws the free pass. That is his team leading 37th of the season. And the Tigers first and second, and still just one out here in the home first. And here comes the top RBI man, Chris Williams, also trying to Put in the rearview mirror, a tough Saturday night, 0 for 5 in the ball game. He did score a run. He reached on a walk when the Tigers were able to push across their first run of the game in the seventh inning, getting it without the benefit of a hit. As Florida State started Parrish and the reliever that followed, Dennis Scalaro combined for four walks in that inning. Williams thought about it, falls behind 0-2. He'd like to continue what he did against the Seminoles last year when he homered and drove in four in that series. And last weekend in Charlottesville, when he had a couple out of the park and drove home five. 13 homers and 48 driven in on the season for the Tigers senior from Southern California. And a good take on a breaking ball down in the zone. Chris Williams. Has been a good hitter with runners in the scoring position. Something that the Clemson Tigers struggled with yesterday. They're going to need a player to step up and drive some run in, runs in if they want to stay in this ball game. Wilkie at second, Beer at first. Swinging on one and two, and that one's just foul. Again, a 1-2. Stays that way, so Williams hanging tough. He fights off a slider. Right now, Chris Williams is just battling. On the other hand, Carp's looking to put him away. Carp second on their team with those 74 strikeouts behind their leader, Parrish, who started last night and ended his night six and a third with eight Ks. Ooh, and that one hitting him in the upper area of the left arm, so the bases are full and just one man out. And Williams getting the first base on the hit by pitch and on the season, that's the sixth time he has reached on a hit by pitch. And a breaking ball that just pops out of Carp's hand. A mistake. One ball, two, two strikes. He ends up hitting Williams and putting him on first base. We didn't see a lot of this yesterday. Pitching was pretty lights out. Now some pressure on this Florida State defense. Big opportunity for the DH for the Tigers, Grayson Bird. One for three last night. Of course, he's 
Picked up the power numbers this year, taking strike one with those seven home runs. He's driven in 20. And he's battled through some injuries. But he seems to have some confidence at the plate. Off speed pitch and a good one for Carp. He's again ahead in the count. This time 0 and 2. And here you see the slider. A very good pitch with the bases loaded. See if Carp goes right after him here with the bags full and just one out. He does, and a swing and a miss, and that's out number two. First strikeout recorded in the ball game for the Florida State right-hander. And it'll be up to Patrick Cromwell. And another slider down in the zone. He gets Bird to chase, and a big strikeout with the bases loaded. So Cromwell, who was active last night, a couple of walks. 0 for 3 in the game. But an opportunity to come through right here and get his first career RBI against the Seminoles. Takes a breaking ball up in the zone for strike one. Smashed up the middle. That's a base hit. Wilkie scores a wave beer. That'll tie it at two. The throw to third to try to get Williams. No. And Cromwell moves up to second. Scored a single. Two RBIs. And Cromwell gets a second on the throw. And the Tigers bounce right back in the home first. And we're even at two apiece. And it's nice to see Cromwell make an adjustment. Takes a breaking ball for strike one. Sits on it on the second pitch and drives it right back up the middle. You have to be impressed with the base running, advancing to second base on the on the throw to third. Good answer for the Tigers. You just, do. other than a few moments, ever saw that kind of spark out of them in terms of their attack in the game last night. Mike Martin will make the visit. Of course, a night to celebrate for him, not only for that win on Saturday evening, but for that now record in NCAA wins. Monty Lee. Conversation with Drew Wharton. Wharton coming through in the game last night as he was able to snap an 0 for 13 skid with a single. He also had an RBI on a sacrifice fly. Let's see how long it is before our home plate hired umpire Jason Bradley heads on out. Now here he comes to break up the conference on the hill. And we have some action a little different than yesterday. I think both teams were missing some guys to step up and perform in uh, clutch situations. And that's part, part of the reason why the game went 13 innings. A lot of guys left out on base. It doesn't uh, seem to have any carryover into today. Of course, obviously, Clemson won't have the ability to use Riley Gilliam today. C.J. Van Eyck not available for Florida State. You would suppose Ryan Miller. That's probably if he out of the Tigers bullpen after the amount of work. He had Tigers a chance to continue this first inning and take their first lead in the series. Wharton swinging through that first pitch. Off speed. And count goes 0 and 2. It looked like a hittable breaking ball up in the zone. But you see Carp elevating that fastball. And that's something that Van Eyck was really successful on yesterday, was pitching up in the zone to this Clemson lineup. Wharton in an 0-2 hole. And he swings and misses. So just like Brooks Crawford in the top half, Florida State's Andrew Carp coming up with a couple of strikeouts. In the bottom half of the first, but he too allows a couple of runs on two hits. Tigers even it at two apiece as we head to inning number two.
Tigers bouncing back with a couple of runs in the home first inning to tie us up at two apiece. That was our score into the 13th last night. Maybe a different kind of game today. Could be a lot different because the wind is blowing out in the top half of the first. Jackson Luke, he really got into one. I don't know if that was when they did. I'm pretty sure Cal Raleigh's blast a couple of batters later was not. That was a gargantuan shot over the building out there behind right center field. And at the time, gave the Seminoles a 2-0 lead. But here we are. Back where we started, Nick Durr, the second baseman, will lead things off. Last night, Durr, two out of six. He had an error, a throwing error that he was bailed out on. As a call was made at third, and the replay did not overturn it, or else the Tigers would have had runners on second and third and a chance to not only tie the game down 3-2 in the home 13th, but a real good chance to walk off with a win as Durr on a chopper to him by Seth Beer with a man on first was not going to get a double play or even the lead runner but made uh, a throw that I know he would love to have back and skipped in the dirt past a really good defensive first baseman Red Applin with those two hits last night two out of six performance he was able to raise his average to 222. Chops this one to short. Davidson might have had a brief issue picking it up and on to first for out number one. And we've seen it before here. Whenever it's so warm outside, this infield dries up and you see a lot of hops. Davidson's able to, to scoop this one up and just out there playing ball, a, a good play, a nice throw. And he's been solid defensively up the middle for Clemson Tigers. Mike Salvatore, the shortstop. And two base runners thrown out by Kyle Wilkie, and we had three video replays last night, and uh, Florida State ended up winning that uh, two to one. The bloop uh, in front of Beer that was originally ruled a catch, but overturned as a Florida State hit. But Salvatore was running, stealing second. He was ruled safe. It appeared the throw it, the throw it certainly beat him, and it looked like Davidson's tag had also gotten on it before the hand got in there, but. He was called out. The review showed otherwise. And, of course, Tigers were not able to get the out call on Davidson sliding into third in the 13th inning, overturned on the video. And that review going against them at obviously a crucial time in the game. Crawford ahead in the count, one and two, seeking his third strikeout in the early going. Wilkie trying to help him out there, but the count of even at two and two. He must have missed off the plate. We see Crawford going to this slider, making an adjustment from the first inning. Count goes full. Salvatore, not one of the guys who draws a lot of walks on a team that leads the nation. But last night, reach base by a couple of bases on balls. So one of his better games on the season in that regard. Florida State now 289 walks as a team playing their 47th game and six of the past nine seasons they have been number one in the nation in team walks. They're selective. They like to go deep into counts. That one ripped. A nice job by Cromwell who made a great play over there to save a run scoring double last night and that time going down the Tigers third baseman pulls it in for out number two and a good swing just hit right at third baseman Patrick Cromwell Cromwell has been really good defensively throughout the year and as we noted last night even though he had a struggle from March into April at the plate he Continue to play really good defense at the hot corner. And you just saw why they called that as incepts Jared Heron out of Orlando, a redshirt freshman for this Florida State team. Didn't see him in last night's game. He's their DH today. And Crawford quickly in front of him, 0-2. And, and a good breaking ball. Crawford's ahead in the count. He's starting to settle down. Of their part-time players, he's their best hitter at 333. And He's one off the inside edge. And a good take. Apparently. In and off the plate. Probably a ball or two inside. Yeah. 
One two pitch. And that one just a little bit outside. So the count even up at two and two. Offer trying to retire the side in order after giving up those two solo homers in the Florida State first inning. Count full. And a guy who had a great night last night waiting on deck and Albert. And you just assume try to close this thing out if you're Crawford and not have a man on base when he comes up as he flexed some power last night. And a swing and a miss. Wilkie will make a tag to make it official in the third strikeout here in the early going for Brooks Crawford closes it out for Florida State in their half of the second so three up three down for the Seminoles Crawford looking to dial in Tigers coming up in the bottom half of inning number two when we come back eight nine and one do up for the Tigers here in the home first Clemson showing some good bounce back we talked about what the hangover effect would be for both teams after the late night and the 13 in game last night but the Tigers responding Loading the bases in the home first, and then Tigers coming through. Patrick Cromwell with a two-run single to tie the ball game. Two runs on two hits in the first inning after Florida State had taken the early 2-0 advantage. Sam Hall started in left field last night. And was pinch hit for in the ball game in that seventh inning when the Tigers would score their first run first pitch swinging left field Luke on the run and it bounces in and out of his glove Hall has speed he'll pull up at second base it was a long way to go for Luke but a ball he should have caught I'm going to be surprised if they award the hit to Hall he had to go a long way for this ball it just pops out of his glove a lot of times you can lose track catching the ball behind your head and Seems to be what happened. Just pops out of his glove. Sam Hall's on second base. And they're going to score a double, so Hall will certainly take that. And he continues a really good run, the Tiger freshman. A guy with great speed, so a single should score him as Jolly standing in. And Jolly came on in the seventh inning as a pinch hitter, ended up going over three with a couple of strikeouts, so an opportunity to bounce back. and break out of what has been a tough stretch for him of late. Jolly's trying to get things going. Came up empty yesterday, was in a couple clutch situations. Now he's up again with a runner in scoring position. All with his second double of his Clemson career. And he probably needs the, to, brought, to buy uh, the official scorer, Hennessy, uh, maybe yeah. a cup of coffee or something tomorrow. That's right. Tigers now hit the, out hit the Seminoles 3-2 to two here in the early going. Mendoza at third, looks the runner back, and that's out number one. Taylor made ground ball to third base. And you really want to try to get this runner over with no outs. But that's not really Jolly's game. He, he likes to stay on that left field line. Just couldn't get the, the job done right there. Logan Davidson flied out to center his first time up. And before the game, I asked him, do you prefer as a switch hitter actually batting left side of the plate or right side of the plate? And obviously it's based on if a righty's on the hill or a lefty's on the hill. But you would think a switch hitter might actually have a side that he likes to hit from and would just as soon hit there regardless. And he actually said, you know, honestly, I tend to like the side of the plate that I'm hitting at the most times in a row by about the, the third or fourth or fifth time. If, if I'm seeing a bunch of righties, obviously, from the left side, I just I, I really don't have a preference, but I, I really do like to get locked in on one side. Now, you're going to see more righties than lefties, so chances are he'd probably tell you he prefers hitting from that left side if he had to absolutely pick one. And I've always found it interesting, especially in the college game where you're playing, you know, at most five, but mostly four games a week. You, you don't really play every single day, and that can really affect a, a guy who's a switch hitter. You may go, you know, three or four days without having a, a bat from one of the sides. Looking to drive in his 27th run of the season. It was his single that followed the leadoff double in the eighth inning last night by Jordan Green. I got the game tied up at two apiece. And of course, Davidson, the ACC player of the week after he hit 500 with a couple of home runs and 
seven driven in. And that big series of Virginia to go along with good games against Kennesaw State and Presbyterian. Two and two count. Hall the runner at second base three out of three on the season and stolen base tries. You've got a really good arm behind the plate in Raleigh so I don't think Monty Lee has any thought of sending him. He doesn't have to right there into right. It'll get down for a hit in front of Wells. He's got the good arm. They're going to send Hall and he'll slide in safely throw to second to get Davidson and he's out. But a single and an RBI and the Tigers taking the lead for the first time this afternoon and the first time in the series three to two. An RBI single from Davidson not necessarily the worst move in the world going to second base. You want to make their make it make a play happen at second so you'll definitely score a run but with Sam Hall's wheels he easily scores and we saw the cannon from uh, Wells yesterday he's got a good arm out there and right 926 on the put out 27th run driven in by Davidson and Kyle Wilkie who singled and later scored his first time up and inning number one stands in First pitch swinging, skied to right, the wind blowing. Wells back at the hill, and he'll pull it in. And that'll do it for the Tigers here in the home second. But a run on a couple of hits. Clemson moves in front three to two after two. As we head to the third, the center fielder Albert to lead things off for Florida State, then back to the top of the order. We have foul ball news for you from our game today. And earlier, the second baseman Durr was at the plate for the Seminoles. He fouled one off. Our camera operator, there, operator over there, Ashley Hodge, she thought she was getting out of the way, but the ball found her. We certainly hope she's okay. We've actually had a team of uh, medical folks checking her out. You know, her dad and her granddad, true story, both played in the NHL. I have a feeling they would not have uh, ducked in that situation. They would have stood up and taken the hit straight on and uh, gone about their business. But, I'm sure uh, they're proud of the toughness. You know, she, she's still in there. She is. She is a tough one, a fighter, a battler, and she continues to uh, getting us some great shots in our upstairs first base camera. So as we go to the top half of the third inning, Seminoles looking up now at a deficit for the first time in these two ball games. Albert's a guy who did a pretty nice job last night to say the least with that big ball game. And as a result, he raises batting average by 25 points as the ninth place hitter in the Seminoles order went four for six with a homer and that one RBI as a result. Brooks Crawford delivering ball one. Albert was locked in yesterday, like you said. And to center field, and on the run is Wharton, and at the hill, the wall reaches up, and it's out of here. And for a second time in as many games, Reese Albert, the freshman out of Jupiter, Florida, has homered, and just like that, we are tied back up, this time at three. And Albert stays hot. Gets a fastball over the plate and drives it out to deep left center field. And how many times do you see this? A guy who's going good hits another ball out of the ballpark. All three Florida State runs on solo homers, and the wind is blowing pretty much straight out. If you look at the flags in right center, that one kind of had a slicing movement on it, but still well hit. So here is a guy who had a solo homer in the 13th inning last night. Fifth home run of the series for the Seminoles as a team. And now they have hit 51 on the season and 44 in their past 31 games. They're just jumping on this fastball from Crawford. He wants to run this thing in on the hands of a lot of right-handed hitters and away from lefties. Whenever he misses over the plate, that's when he gets touched up. Well, for trying to bounce back strong against Wells, who he got on a swinging strikeout to start things out in the first inning. Three Ks so far for Crawford. So Crawford is now allowed seven home runs on the season. And once again, that one, that foul ball over in the neighborhood of our first base camera person who may be filing a significant uh, workers uh, comp report by the end of our ball game today. And just getting a piece that time as well. 
Do we need a personal protector up there? I'm thinking Maybe with we, a glove uh, or a, a batting helmet? We may need to assign our uh, very uh, efficient stats person instead to maybe get his catcher's gear on and go on out there and uh, be on the lookout. We, we need to keep our camera folks healthy. Again, the one two offering and a swing and a miss. Four strike out of the game for Crawford. Second time he's gotten Wells and that's out number one here in the Florida State third. Here you see a slider located right below the knees and a good pitch from Crawford. Jackson Luke started our scoring with his team leading 11th home run, a solo blast when he came to the plate in the first inning and then aided the Tigers' cause by having one pop out of his glove as he sprinted to left center field. And that's how Sam Hall was able to lead things off of what was ruled a double in the Tigers' second. And Hall would come around to score the third Tigers' run. Soft liner and Hall. On to first, round number two. And if you're a pitcher coming in today, you have to expect it's, it's going to be tough out there with the wind just howling out. But these guys have been through a long season, and they're uh, pretty established. So, you know, you see the tenacity, and they just bounce back and continue to throw strikes. Red Applin. Dangerous hitter, especially on a day like today when the wind's blowing out to right. He has some power and he's been very selective at the plate this year. Time for their team lead with 41 walks, although Crawford starting him out with strike one. Crawford's just trying to get this fastball inside. And where he's gotten hurt is when he misses over the plate. Mike Martin, who just saw him, preaching patience and saying that this decade run of leading the nation in walks isn't necessarily anything new. I mean, he'd always had teams that he always thought had a pretty good eye, and then he told me on Saturday that you know, back in the 90s, his team were averaging about five walks a game. They ended up with four last night, which is a low for them. Again, Hall, this time a grounder right at him, and on to first. So three up and three down for the second, uh, or I should say three men retired after the home run by Albert, which makes the game a 3-3 ball game. And Mike Martin, the head coach of Florida State, will visit with us after this timeout. With Kyle Parker, Pete Gannity with you back at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. So the home run by Albert ties us up at 3-3. There's head coach Mike Martin. Coach, congratulations, of course, on the big milestone last night. And uh, was there somewhat of a celebration maybe in the hotel lobby when you guys all got back there? Oh, there were a few people there, but main people was my family. I, everybody was here, but our youngest daughter had to go back to teach at Shorecrest in St. Petersburg. But mm -hmm. it was obviously a, a memorable night. It was a heck of a ball game. I mean, the fans got their money's worth. Coach Kyle Parker here. Congratulations yesterday. You've been doing this a long time. Do you still enjoy coming out to the baseball park every single day? Kyle, if, if, if I didn't, I promise you I'd try to lower my handicap. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great day for golf today, huh? You yeah. could hit it around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I would hit it around, I'm sure, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> with the win, for sure. Uh, now, you know, you're locked in another close game. You're kind of hanging around near the top of the division. When do you guys start really thinking about, you know, we may have a chance to, to take this thing? Well, you never want to feel like you're out of it when you can't mathematically see yourself out of it now. We know that this is going to be a very challenging weekend for us. We need to play well in order to position ourselves for a spot in the postseason. Uh, and, of course, we've still got North Carolina State to play. So there are no easy schools in Atlantic Coast Conference. This is uh, a challenging weekend for us. And, well, we got seven, six, uh, seven and a half innings left. Yeah. So we got a lot yeah. of baseball left to be played here. Coach, we thank you so much. And, again, congratulations on that milestone. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Coach.
trying to take down Florida State today, but Mike Martin's team has come back from trailing by a run. Seth Beer, though, with a good start for Clemson here in the home half of the third. As Beer coming through with his first hit in the series, a leadoff base runner. A Florida State ball club that, again, the Tigers would love to win the Atlanta division. They sit in first place. NC State's in the hunt. Seminoles in third place two games out, but Last year, Florida State won the ACC championship, finished fifth in the division. So there are very few guarantees beyond the regular season, no matter where you finish in, in the standings. Chris Williams would like to do what Seth Beer just did and come through with a first base hit in the series. Williams chases a fastball up in the zone. Reached on a hit by pitch in the first inning, was later left stranded at third. And you see the wind blowing out, and as a hitter, you can kind of be enticing to take these big home run swings, and you just have to keep to the basics, get a pitch that you can drive and not try to do too much. And he falls behind the count 0 and 2. 3 5 and 0 for the Tigers, 3 3 and 0 for Florida State. Or couple of strikeouts. Brooks Crawford, the Clemson starter. Four Ks so far. First inning walk. Coming back to Han Karp. As he gave the free pass to Beer, who eventually came around and scored. To third, short hop Mendoza can't handle it, and Salvatore Alexa just put it in his back pocket. So we're going to go with E5. That'll be the first error in the game on either team. And the Tigers have them on first and second with no one out here in the third. And a tough play. Mendoza gets it on a short hop. And you, and you can see him trying to get the lead runner at, at second base. But has to be aggressive to come in and get this ball. And just misplays it. Grayson Bird striking out his first time up. A big opportunity. For the Tigers junior DH out of Milton, Georgia. Just as they answered Florida State's two runs in the first, trying to answer right now. And that one driven high and deep to left. Luke is back, reaches up, it's gone. A three run homer for Grayson Bird. Coming through big time with his eighth long ball of the season. And Clemson indeed answers and breaks back in front. This time by three runs. It's a six to three game. And Bird did not miss this pitch. Finally gets a fastball out over the plate, something that he can drive. He elevates to the left center field and a three run home run for the Tigers. He has really picked up the power numbers this year and we've seen a couple of opposite field home runs now. One for Albert of Florida State and that one by Grayson Bird. And a good swing, not necessarily a, a bad pitch by Carp, but Bird stays locked in on it, doesn't pull off this ball and drives it deep to left field. Seventh home run allowed by Andrew Carp this season. So he lasted just an inning and a third his last time out when he was overcome by illness in the second inning against Miami. This ball game, he has given up now six runs over the first well, two innings plus. He has yet to retire a batter here in the third. And here's a guy who came in with a 2.83 ERA. Pretty nice play uh, on that hit by uh, Grayson Bird, uh, fortunately for the Tigers, made by a fan out in the stands in uh, left field. He, he may be feeling it in his hands for the next couple of weeks as Patrick Cromwell stands in. The count goes one and one. And for the Tigers, that's their first homer in the series, and now the Clemson team was 69 on the year. And that's their 47th game. By the way, the national leader in home runs, Tennessee Tech, has 98. They came into the weekend with nearly 30 homers more than the second place team, Arkansas, which has 69. And Tennessee Tech also leads the nation in batting average. You have to wonder how long their games are. They play in the Ohio Valley Conference where, let's face it, the pitching probably isn't of the level of a, some of the major conferences and not of the depth, especially once you get past the Friday starters. Cromwell swings and misses. They're probably playing four and a half hour games that are going nine innings uh, when you think about the amount of offense they're generating. And you got to check the, the home field advantage. 
Mm. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm not that familiar with the park that Tennessee Tech plays in, but I probably also have something to do with it. Although that's the kind of team that probably travels a lot in February and uh, and March outside of their conference. Probably should look that up and see how much that might be aided by a band box kind of park. So when I played in Colorado, every Sunday day game, that was at least going to be a, a four hour one uh, with the way the ball flies there and, and the thin air. So kind of familiar uh, with a lot of home runs. I'm all thinking that the count goes full. Yeah, I mean, yours is the uh, first major league uh, home ballpark, the epicenter of long balls. It's the highest altitude in the major leagues out there at Coors Field. Arizona is second. And that one's ripped through the right side. A base hit for Cromwell. Tigers with another man on and still no one out here in the home third. And a nice swing from Cromwell. Just stays locked on a breaking ball. Drives it to the right side of the infield for a single. Cromwell now two for two in the game. Of course, he had the two-run single to start the scoring for Clemson in the home first. Slowly building that batting average back up. Couple of hits today. He came in hitting 253. Here's Wharton. Two strikeout victims against Carp. That is what closed out the first inning for the Florida State righty. And Wharton first pitch swinging. That's going to get down inside the line and head into the left field corner. Cromwell to third. He'll be held there. Wharton pulls into second base. Second and third for the Tigers as Drew Wharton. Coming through with his 11th double on the season. He's second on the team. And the Tigers now with two in scoring position and still nobody out. And a good swing from Wharton. It's nice to see him make an adjustment. You've seen this Florida State pitching staff come in and, and start these Clemson Tiger hitters off with breaking balls just to get me over breaking ball to get ahead in the count. Wharton jumps right on it and drives it down the left field line. And this attack looking much more like the one that was a big part of that eight game winning streak when we just visited with Mike Martin little did any of us know what kind of inning his team would have to endure and his starting pitcher Andrew Carp who will get a visit from the head coach Tigers now with eight hits and we have yet to complete the third inning of this game and Clemson managing just six hits in 13 innings last night so a very nice bounce back from the long ball game on Saturday for the Clemson team. And it was a pitcher's duel, but Clemson did have their, their chances in that game. They just were unable to produce with runners on base. And I think it's key for both teams to have good starting pitching performances. Playing 13 innings, Clemson burned their setup guy and closer. So it will be a big advantage to, to have a uh, starting pitcher that, that can make it at least to the, the fifth or sixth inning. Played umpire Jason Bradley will come out to break things up in the mound. You saw Monty Lee visiting with Sam Hall, who will come up now with men on second and third. And Hall had a good swing his first time up when he hit a gapper that was scored a double as it went in and out of the glove of Luke, the left fielder. Florida State last night won that game, stranding 15 runners. It's rare you strand that many guys and you're able to come away with a victory. I mean, that was stunning. You're right. There's uh, many a chances we could have gone home a, a little earlier. Florida State able, able to get the victory uh, off the bat of Wells with that big time homer. In on the corners with men on second and third, but yeah, back at shortstop and second base and swing and a miss for Hall. All this season, just a couple of strikeouts and 19 plate appearances for the first. That'll get a run home on the ground at a short, so the RBI for Hall. And the Tigers build the lead to the largest of the game at 7 to 3. And Hall's able to get the runner over from second base and also get an RBI in. It's just a ground out to shortstop, but a productive at bat. Hall driving in his fourth run as a Tiger. He did a couple of RBIs last weekend at Virginia. So 
Wharton moving over to third on the play. Robert Jolly, just one man out. Now the infield coming in for Florida State, but a chance to get an RBI even if he isn't able to come through with a hit. Jolly shows bunt, a possible safety squeeze attempt. All he needs to do right now is just get a ball that he can elevate, something that he can put into the outfield. Mendoza still remains just at the cutout. Now he comes onto the grass a little bit at third. Now we pinch hit in a tough situation in the seventh inning last night, but unable to come through. But earlier this season, he was the best Tigers hitter with men in scoring position. One one pitch. Up ahead in the count. Seminoles last night used just three pitchers, and one of their relievers, Scolaro, only faced two batters in a third of an inning. But the guy who's going to be a real star for them, freshman C.J. Van Eyck, went six and a third to close it out and get the win. So he's not available today, and they are a team, and particularly a pitching staff that has been hit hard by injury this year. So they don't have the bullpen pen depth they'd like to have, and they've. Counted not only on the true freshman Van Eyck, but Scolaro's a freshman and they've counted on Connor Grady this year, and he is also a first year performer. Jolly hanging tough, count remains one and two. And Jolly's just fighting in there, trying to get something that he can handle. You see Carp starting to elevate, trying to get it on the hands. Tigers four runs in the inning so far to build a 7-3 lead, and that one's going to get through the left side, and an RBI single for Jolly. And the Tigers make it a five-run inning. The lead is now 8-3. to three. And Finally, Jolly gets a ball that he can put into play, flicks it through the hole. And you have to think early in the game, you have the infield in, and, you know, I, I, I'm always of the belief that you take your outs early, especially on a day like today with the wind blowing. So through the drawn in infield, the rounder, the 17th run batted in on the season for the Tigers senior left fielder Jolly. And now the top of the order, Logan Davidson up for a third time. One for two with a single and an RBI in the second inning. He was able to get Hall home. Mendoza, kind of a strange bounce on that one. Throw to get Davidson by a step for out number two. And on the play, Jolly moves to second initially. Third baseman thought about cutting down the lead runner. And a little confusion at second base, and this is kind of what the shift does to you. You can get the second baseman playing a little too deep. He can't really get there on, on a potential double play turn. But nonetheless, Mendoza goes across the diamond and, and gets uh, at least one out. Tough inning for the third baseman, who's error on the Chris Williams choppers. He tried to short hop it. Put Williams on base and set the table for what's been now a five run Clemson inning. Ninth man in the inning to bat, Kyle Wilkie. Man in scoring position and good guy to have up there for the Tigers. He's been their hottest hitter. He's already extended his hitting streak to 13 in a row with a first inning single this afternoon. Kyle Wilkie's been locked in. You see him in the two hole today, just mixing up this lineup. The Tigers are just trying to get something going. All behind 0-2. Carp has been ahead of most batters he's faced. It's just what the Tigers have been able to do in terms of battling and either working counts deep or delivering when the count was 1-2 and two against him. And he's made a few mistakes, but you have to credit this Tigers lineup for taking advantage and not missing pitches. I think one of the big things is you see the willingness to, to take a swing at a breaking ball early in a count. I think that's a big tendency from these Florida State pitchers. They've been getting ahead with their breaking balls, and it seems like Clemson has wanted to hit a fastball and just let them go. 
That one upstairs and Wilkie ducking out of the way. It's uh, more than just high and tight. It went behind him. Wow. Carp approaching 60 pitches and has yet to get through the third inning. The Carp's just searching for a pitch to be able to put someone away. He's been mixing fastball and breaking ball. Look for him probably to throw that slider down in the zone. One two pitch coming to Kyle Wilkie with Jolly on second and again he fouls away. He's challenging Wilkie. He goes with a two seam fastball in on the hands. The fourth year junior at a winter garden Florida. And the runner going, throw to third, and Jolly's in there. So, a bit of a surprise as Robert Jolly is able to take third. He's now a perfect two out of two on the season in stolen bases, and the Tigers have him 90 feet closer. Two men out, but the count even at two and two. And Jolly gets a really good jump. You see the middle infielders not paying too much attention to him. He was able to expand his lead. Like he was distracted by something behind him there. And here's the 2 2 pitch. And Wilkie, if nothing else, is hanging tough and building on this sizable pitch count and leading you to believe that Carp won't be around too long in this game with the Tigers. have done some nice work. Eight runs on nine hits so far. Again, he goes to a full count on the batter. And a good take from Wilkie. He's really working this at bat. And this one driven high and deep to left. Luke is back and in front of the wall leaps and he makes the catch. Nice job by Jackson Luke. Avenging that play in left center that led to the Hall double, but the Tigers have themselves an inning here in the third. Five runs on five hits, a big three-run blast by Grayson Bird, and almost a two-run shot by Wilkie. Tigers have an 8-3 lead as we head to the fourth. Monty Lee, the head coach, will visit with us when we come back. Back at Doug Kingsmore, Monty Lee now visiting with us. I guess the best thing to have a team show that they can bounce back from a tough loss the night before, score eight runs in the first three innings. Really nice approach to the plate so far. Was that part of some kind of pregame talk? No, not really at all. I mean, we just, uh, you know, obviously we needed to bounce back after the first, gave up a couple solo homers, and we did. Uh, Cromwell with a big two-out hit. And I think that, uh, you know, the momentum just kind of became, uh, came in our dugout after that point. And uh, swinging the bats well so far. It's a great day to hit. We just got to continue to put good swings on the baseball. Coach, I want to talk about your catcher, uh, Kyle Wilkie. A great at bat right there, uh, robbed of a home run, but what do you got to say about a guy who uh, is starting to swing it so well? Well, you know, he's on time to everything right now. He's seeing the ball up in the strike zone. He's on time. He stays in the middle of the field, so he's a really good approach hitter, and we just keep bumping him up. You know, early in the year, he's hitting in the eight, nine hole for us, keeps working his way up, and now he's hitting in the two hole. Uh, today, we're trying to get him up there as much as we can. You know, I think the two hole is a really good place for him, the way he's stroking it. Uh, did a whole lot of thought go into putting him in there? Or was yeah, that just... yeah, no, I mean, we talked about it as a coaching staff, but overall, we just felt like he gives you so many good at bats, and that spot's been a big spot for us, and RBI situations and uh, right now you know he's a perfect candidate to put in the two hole and, and uh, you know so far it's worked out pretty good for us. Coach, you, know, you standing there with the players, it almost looks like an album cover, uh, the picture we're showing right now. <laughs> well, you know, I, I can't control everything that these guys do, so uh, I, I really don't know what's going on right now. I'm just trying to focus on what I can control, which is this interview, but all these knuckleheads yeah. beside me, they like to have fun in the dugout. Yeah, it looks like you're the lead singer in a band. Let me put it that way. <laughs> all right, well, Thanks good so deal. much. All right, guys. Monty Lee, the Clemson coach.
looking to see his team build their lead back over Florida State in the ACC Atlantic to three games and with NC State playing out of the conference the Tigers look to maintain a two game lead over the Wolfpack but answering right back is Cal Raleigh and that one got out of the park in a New York minute second time up for the catcher his second home run of the game and now has nine of the season and just like that as you noted uh, with the wind blowing out uh, there could be a whole lot of scoring going on as the afternoon continues and Florida State pulls within four and I don't think the wind has anything to do with uh, Raleigh's two bombs that ball was touched pretty good you see the bat speed from Raleigh and he just gets a pitch over the plate and doesn't miss it keep in mind this season Florida State has won two games in which they've given up at least 10 runs so they know what it's like to be in some wild kind of contest as you see what that wind is doing but again the two home runs that Raleigh has hit I don't think whether the wind was even blowing in a little bit would have impacted no just two good swings and another ball hit deep to right center field and this one's out of here oh off the wall yeah that one's off the wall and Wharton will get it in but Mendoza will dive into second with a double so now a man in scoring position as the top hitter on this Florida State team Drew Mendoza gets his 13th two bagger of the season and this one was up in the jet stream and it hits off the top of the wall and right center field it looks like Andrew C is going to come out try to settle down Crawford he's missing with these fastballs he needs to get in on the hands of these left-handed hitters on a day like today and you miss over the plate some real damage can be done so four home runs allowed by Brooks Crawford today doubling his total on the season. He's now given up eight on the year. We've had five home runs hit in the game. The really good news for Crawford if, if there is a silver lining on the four homers he's allowed they've all been solo blasts or is the one home run the Tigers hit by Bird that came with a couple of guys on and gave them a pretty decent working margin and set them up in that inning that five run third inning and Clemson needs Crawford to go deep into this game just analyzing the score you still have a four run lead and sees just out there settling them down so here's Durr with the man in scoring position the sophomore second baseman out of Sarasota Florida rounded out to Davidson his first time up Strike delivered by Crawford. As you noted, you want Crawford to go deep in this game for a number of reasons, but first and foremost, because a couple of guys you've counted on on the back end of the bullpen, you certainly know you don't have Gilliam, and you also got three and a third out of Ryan Miller last night, in which he faced 14 batters, and so there is the likelihood that his availability is limited or maybe uh, is not available at all for the ball game today. You possibly could have Miller for one inning. And a called strike three. Opportune time with a man in scoring position to get the first down. That is the fifth strikeout for Brooks Crawford so far this afternoon. And a good breaking ball. It's nice to see Crawford bounce back. So of the five strikeouts that Crawford has registered, that's the first time he's gotten a batter looking. Like Salvatore, the shortstop. Hit a liner to third that Cromwell snared his first time up. That was in the second inning. And another breaking ball in there for a strike. Crawford is finally finding this off speed pitch. He's a sinker ball guy, which means he needs to be down in the zone in order to get ground balls. It's Mendoza back to third. Trailing by four here in the fourth inning. I doubt Mendoza's going anywhere. Although, obviously, you, if you're Florida State, you'd like to see him in a position where a sack fly would get him home, but the way the ball's flying around today, I don't know that that's something you need to worry about at this point. Yeah, well, you just want to keep him close enough so if you get a hard hit ball, let's say at the left fielder, you don't send him home automatically. 
Chopper to short. Mendoza will head to third. Davidson throws to first. That's out number two. So both times up. Salvatore has hit the ball on the left side. That time the grounder to his opposite number. Two away with a man on third down for Florida State. And here comes the designated hitter, Heron. Just a routine ground ball to shortstop Logan Davidson. He sets his feet and makes a nice throw across the diamond. Heron, 323 on the season, limited opportunities for the freshman out of Orlando. Last night they used both Kobe Johnson, who was a guy we could see out of their bullpen today. He also pitches. He was the DH to start out, and then Rafael Bornegal Jr. finished out the game in that role. Pulled a few times today. Crawford falls behind a batter, 2-0. And you don't want to give in right here. You're down on the count, 2-0. and oh. But a walk isn't necessarily the worst thing. Davidson takes his time with a slow man running on to first. And Crawford able to leave that runner stranded at third base. So Florida State... With a run on ahead, a second solo blast by Cal Raleigh. Both have been no doubters, but no further damage after that. Middle of the fourth here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium, 8 4, Clemson Lee. The final two innings. A windy day here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium, and perhaps aiding some of the five long balls we've seen, although we have seen a couple of rockets off the bat of Cal Raleigh, the catcher for Florida State. All of the Florida State runs have come on solo homers. Tigers with a big five-run third inning and now back to work. Here in inning number four with Seth Beer to start things out. Beer hitting in the three-hole this afternoon. He has reached on a walk and picked up his first base hit in the series. Last time up to lead things off in the third, and he came home on the bird. Three-run blast. Beer struggled yesterday, but like you said, just got on the board with a hit and a guy who has the ability to heat up. And has to have noticed those Cal Raleigh balls that have sailed over his head, and he's got to think, you know, he can just as well run into one like that here this afternoon, or more. Clark is back out there, having given up eight runs on nine hits, and it has been a tough afternoon so far. This one the opposite way. Long run for Luke, and it'll sail out of play anyway. Jackson Luke's been running all over the place today. Of course, he was able to deny Wilkie a two-run homer at the end of that third inning. Or else the Tigers might still be batting. That was a good play, navigating along the fence. He's able to bring a home run back, save two runs. Oh, and that one is a scenario where the umpire will not give Beer first base saying he did not have his body in the proper position either to get out of the way or he was leaning over the plate and leaned into it and that's the call right there. So in that situation it looked like he one two count. He kind of you know put his elbow out over the plate. You don't see that happen uh, too often. But uh, nonetheless, a, a judgment call, and it's going to be a 2-2 count. It's going to be a 2-2 count. Yeah, it'll a two -two count. That's it. So it'll be called a ball. For the moment, I thought that the umpire was indicating no pitch, but it'll be called a ball. By the way, the Tigers doing some pretty good damage, to say the least, with this 8-4 lead. And in fact, it's the most runs allowed in a game this year by Carp as Beer has a nice cut at that one. Count stays two and two. He had previously allowed seven runs all earned against Florida in a game back on March 13th. Activity in that 
Florida State bullpen. So we could see Mike Martin go down there sooner than later. As you saw, they have the right hander, Tyler Ahern, up and throwing. And you just don't see him putting away these Clemson hitters. Has gotten into a lot of two strike counts, but they just continue to fight back. Here had that big series in Tallahassee a year ago. He was seven out of 12, three home runs. Popped up left side, Mendoza. So if you're going the opposite way against that shift, but unable to really get a whole lot on that one, and it's out number one to start things out here in Tigers fourth. Chris Williams reaching on an error by the third baseman Mendoza in the third inning. He's been on base each time on a hit by a pitch and then that error. And when he got on in the third, Bird followed with the three run homer. And at the time, it broke the 3 3 deadlock. And a big cut from Williams on a fastball up in the zone. He fouls it straight back. Harp has not retired the Tigers in order. Clemson has scored in each of their three times up prior to this fourth inning. Two in the first, one in the second, and then five in the third. And the Williams shift looks a lot different than anything we've seen. It almost looks like softball. Four outfielders for Mike Martin and he has the two infielders on the left side and this one looking to split the difference and a drive to right center and it's out of here it just got over the wall to the right of the 390 foot sign and Chris Williams with an emphatic first hit in the series that's his 14th homer of the year the second hit in the game for the Tigers and the teams have now combined for a half dozen out of the park and Clemson again scoring an inning to make it nine to four and Chris Williams makes an adjustment, drives this ball to straightaway center field, a pitch that's out over the plate. He gets his arms extended, hits it off the batter's eye to dead center. It just snuck out over. It looked like it was going to be off the wall. And I have never seen the four outfielder shift. And well, that's the one way to beat it. Two years ago, Mike Martin for beer, and I think one other hitter in the Tigers lineup, he kept rotating his left fielder and his right fielder. And all of a sudden, when Beer came up, you'd see the guys sprinting to their respective uh, other one's position. Well, I've seen the, the third baseman come over to second base. You see that a lot because uh, sure. you don't necessarily want your third baseman playing shortstop. But uh, and then the extra infielder, but that's usually in, in, you know, extra innings or clutch situations at the end of games. So Mike Martin conversing with Carp, and he does have the freshman Righty warming in the bullpen. I believe that was the indication, and it was. So we're going to see Tyler Ahern come on here in the fourth inning as starter Andrew Karp's day is done. We're back after this. Yet another freshman out of the bullpen for Florida State. Tyler Ahern is on 6'2", 185 out of Jupiter, Florida. Other than their shortstop, Salvatore, and just a couple of others in the team, as you would expect, everyone on this Florida State team comes from the Sunshine State, and you see the numbers for Ahern on the season, and he comes into a game where his team is down by five, but you have to feel that for both sides, I mean, the opportunities are there to score many more runs this afternoon. No doubt about it. You're not out of this game with the wind blowing the way it is. You see Ahern uh, almost a one-to-one -one strikeout to walk ratio. But you just want to stay down in the zone. Anything up has the potential of getting hit out of the ballpark. And it's Andrew Carp back behind the bench in the dugout. Not a good outing for him. He ends up going three and a third, allowing nine runs on ten hits. And one of those hits was a blast that kind of put the game uh, in the flow that we have now as Grayson Bird came up with a couple on in that third inning and delivered one 
Into the left field stand. You saw the fellow out left making the nice catch for the Tigers. Designated hitter his eighth homer of the season. Now is 23 batted in, and here he is. Third plate appearance of the game. He struck out his first time, but avenged that with that home run. And of course, Grayson Bird knows all about multi home run games. He had the three against Charleston Southern earlier this season. Home run by Williams, second of the game for this Tigers team and giving them 70 on the season, playing here in game number 47 on the year. Little cue shot to third, Mendoza waiting on it. Strong throw, and what a nice job by the first baseman, Applin, who, with the runner coming right at him, able to apply the tag and get out of the way, and that's out number two. And it looks like a changeup that Burgess hits off the end of the bat. He's been struggling with injury. Can't really get down the line like he would like. And a good play by Applin at first base, applying the tag. Patrick Cromwell, two for two. A couple of RBIs and a run scored on the afternoon. Ground out in that five run third. See the batting average back up to 263. Of course, earlier in the year, he was the Tigers' top hitter in the early stages of the season. Here he takes an off speed pitch. Cromwell's had two good at bats so far today. So, Carp in that. Three and a third inning outing. But you allowed the 10 hits, nine runs, eight of them were earned, a walk, two strikeouts for 74 pitches, 55 of them for strikes. And he follows up last week's inning and a third start against Miami that had left due to illness with just three and a third innings today. And it's his third shortest appearance of the year. Three one pitch count goes full and an aggressive hack Cromwell fouls one straight back every batter in the Tigers lineup has at least one hit in the game today and here we are still in the fourth inning and that's ball four actually might have caught the Right foot with Cromwell. And that will be scored a hit batsman. Second time in the game, the Tiger has reached that way. Williams took one on the arm in the first inning. Second batter hit by Ahern this year. Drew Wharton doubled and scored his first time, or his last time up, his first time up, he struck out. He jumped on a breaking ball last at bat. First pitch here, he takes a fastball over the outer half of the plate. Ward now with 11 doubles on the season. Davidson leads the team with a dozen. And of course, he's flashed some power. Six homers. He had not homered prior to this season, but has a half a dozen. And he fouls this one back. He is a guy. That does have some pop, like you said, Pete. Just about swinging at pitches that he can drive. He gets in trouble whenever he starts chasing that elevated fastball. And he's tied with Seth Beer for second on the team with those 33 runs batted in. And 
with a delayed steal by Cromwell's. The ball was in the dirt and thrown into center, so Cromwell's going to get up. He'll head to third, and he'll stand there with two men out. So a second error in the ball game against Florida State on the throw that allows Cromwell to get over to third. But, you know, it looked like he faked as if he were going, then elected to when the ball was in the dirt. And we're going to call it a wild pitch, and then the E2. And it's just good baseball. Whenever you see the catcher drop to his knees, you take off. You know the ball's going to be in the dirt, and you have a good chance to advance to second base. And a good heads-up base running play by Cromwell. 2-2 Two -two to Wharton, hard grounded to third, but there's Mendoza. And that'll end it for the Tigers here in the fourth inning, but they are able to build the lead back out to five runs. Chris Williams is first hit in the series. One that'll get him some notice, a blast to center field. Williams now 14 homers on the season to lead this Tigers team. So we head to the fifth. Clemson a 9-4 advantage. You see the view from the back of the left field stands from Doug Kingsmore Stadium as we wrap around the football facility. We were talking during the break what uh, a great wiffle ball facility the, the indoor would be uh, to go in there and uh, here we are, and actually that perspective more from our camera in center field. And all the way into Doug Kingsmore as we start the Florida State half of the fifth inning. And he who possesses one of their four home runs in the game, Reese Albert, the center fielder, the freshman out of Jupiter, Florida, will lead things off. He has brought that batting average up big time during this series in which he has five hits so far. Five for seven against Tigers pitching this weekend for Albert. Who was hitting 232 when Saturday night's game began, but now you see he's over 260. He's been swinging it lately. Seems like every at bat he hit something hard. Drove a couple balls out of the ballpark. Someone you need to be careful with. Offer trying to dial in, get through this fifth inning. He'd be eligible for the win, and obviously he'd like to take this thing a little bit deeper than his last start when he went five against Virginia last Saturday. And the one-two pitch lined, and there is Davidson. Had him played perfectly. Just a little bit left of second base for out number one. Maybe got a hair in on the hands of Albert, but still a good swing, a line drive, but Davidson's able to range it down, playing almost directly behind second base. Top of the order, Stephen Wells. Over two in the game with two strikeouts. He was last night's hero with that solo homer in the 13th, but he's just one out of nine in the series. And he has been a hot hitter for them. He's only had a 12 for 12 streak and he came into the weekend with five multiple hit games over the past two weeks. Clemson has had him figured out. A year ago he went 0-2 oh, in just one game played against the Tigers. So, work against Clemson, not all that inspiring so far. And a strike delivered by Crawford. Tigers junior right-hander with five Ks so far. Ripped, and what a nice job on the scoop by Cromwell. Up with it, on to first. Another top-shelf play delivered in this game and in this series by the Tigers' third baseman. And it's two up and two down here in the fifth. Patrick Cromwell continues to flash the leather at third base. He's picking it over there, gets back up to his feet, and makes a nice throw across the diamond. Jackson Luke delivering the first run of the game with that solo homer in inning number one. Four solo home runs have provided the scoring for Florida State. And Luke, their team leader with 11 on the season, now is driven in 36. He had led them in hitting the past couple of years, and it's really something. He started today with a 237 average. You see he has it at 240. 
but the junior left fielder in leading this team the first two years in batting average. Two years ago, he hit 379. Last year, he hit 318. And the power numbers last year weren't all that bad. He had nine home runs in 2017, but a big time drop off. And his coach thinks it has a lot to do with some of the cold weather they played in. Jolly has that one measured in left field. And Crawford, a very clean fifth inning. Pretty nice play behind him by Cromwell. But the Tigers through four and a half, maintain a five run lead, nine to four here at Doug Kingsmore. With Kyle Parker, Pete Gannity with you here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. We head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Tyler Ahern back on for a second inning of work on a relief of the starter, Andrew Karp, who's in danger of suffering a fourth loss on the season. Now, last night, Mike Martin with that new NCAA record, 1,976 victory, passing Augie Garrido, the longtime coach at Cal State Fullerton in Texas, who passed away earlier this year. And Mike Martin and Augie Garrido were good friends. They, of course, gone against each other out in Omaha a number of times over the years or in NCAA tourney play. And Mike Martin has had an amazing career, but he has uh, one prize that is out there that he and all the Seminole fans won, and that is a College World Series championship. He has taken Florida State to Omaha 16 times. That's an amazing feat in itself. And each of his 39 years, they've gone to the NCAA tourney. Florida State as the program has made it to Omaha 22 times, but that elusive winning it all. And there have been many great teams that have arrived at first Rosenblatt Stadium and since 2011 TD Ameritrade ballpark and come away going two and out or not winning a title. And grounder to short will retire Sam Hall to start things out here in the Tigers half of the fifth inning. But that is uh, really something to have all those wins, all the success. And again, every year, and they have a run of 40 in a row, and, and he's taken them the past 39. Every year you're in the NCAA tournament, and 16 in the past 39 years, more than one-third of the time you've made it to Omaha, and you would think just the law of averages, they would have come away with at least one title. You have to get a lot of breaks, playing in tournament, play. I think it's a lot different than, than just regular season play. Absolutely. You go deep into your bullpen. You have to have some guys step up and uh, some surprises. Your last game as a Clemson Tiger was played at the old Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, one of the final games ever played there in 2010. And what was that experience uh, like playing just in the College World Series as our home plate umpire took one right there? So Raleigh will head on out to the mound to have a discussion with his pitcher to give Jason Bradley time to recover. But take me just kind of through the on-field experience. And, and Rosenblatt held about 20-something thousand for baseball, and the new place holds 24,000. Well, it's a lot of fun. It, it, and it's a, more of a, a professional, I guess, big league environment. You're going in, uh, you know, with a packed stadium, and you get to play in front of a lot of good people, and you're playing on ESPN every day. So uh, it is a lot of fun and, it, and kind of the pinnacle of college baseball. Robert Jolly breaking through with an RBI single his last time up in the third. Sees the count go to two and one. That helped him end in a bit of a bumpy streak. He did well against Florida State last year when he was four out of eight. Jolly one for four last weekend against Virginia as he played a couple of games. But the College World Series, and I've covered seven of them over the years. Uh, it's just such a great, great atmosphere. I, 2010, I actually spent the full two weeks out there. And so to see the whole thing from start to finish was really amazing. And uh, of course, kind of got a taste of that. I went out and covered the, the basketball, uh, the Clemson basketball team when they played out there uh, back in March. So it was kind of neat being back in Omaha. It was the first time I'd been there not to cover baseball, but that's a, really just a neat place. And it, You've never made that pilgrimage, uh, and even if, if you follow a, a team, but, but they don't make it, just if you have the opportunity one year, you're, you're thinking of doing something a little bit different on a vacation, maybe make plans to try to get tickets and spend part of the time out there because it's a, it is absolutely a festival for baseball. So a man on with Jolly at first, and top of the order, Logan Davidson at the plate for the fourth time in the ball game. I think the thing that stands out 
about the tournament in the College World Series is, is just the, the pureness of baseball. You have a lot of kids who, you know, our families are paying their way to go to school. And uh, unlike the professional ranks, they're not making a whole lot of money. They're just out there for the joy of the game and the opportunity. And, you know, the bond, I think, that you have uh, established with your teammates, it, it's easy and it, and it shows at that level. Davidson thought about it. This ball clearly down and off the plate. And again, low and away, so the count evens at two and two. Jolly over at first, able to pick up his second stolen base of the year in the third inning, but he was not able to come home. It's a hard liner to right. It'll get down in front of Wells. Golly makes the turn and holds it second, so first and second. One man out here in the Tigers' fifth, setting up shop again and looking to score at least a run in a fifth consecutive inning in this game. And you have to be encouraged from what you're seeing from Davidson. It looks like he's really turning the page offensively. We've talked about him a, a lot during our broadcast, but a guy with a really high ceiling hasn't had a... Uh, a terrible year, but I guess to his expectations, probably underachieving a little bit. He's really been swinging the bat well, though, as of late. Yeah, second hit in the ball game for the Tigers shortstop. Here is Kyle Wilkie looking for his second hit of the day. He singled and scored in the first. Has since flied out to right and to left. Each of those were pretty deep. This one on the right side giving chase is Applin the first baseman and he makes a nice catch. Runners will tag. The throw will go to second. It gets away so Jolly's going to come home and to third goes Davidson. He's going to be waved and here comes Logan Davidson and on a pop out to the first baseman two men end up coming home and the Tigers have opened up a seven run lead at 11 to four. And to start off, it was a great play by Applin. Going back on this ball and making the catch along the wall. And it's a bang-bang play at second base. Just gets by shortstop Salvador. Two runs are able to score. And that's why you always tag up with a ball in foul territory. You have the first baseman going to, taking his momentum away from second base. And that's a tough play and a tough throw. But an unfortunate error for Florida State. Third error in the ball game. Obviously, no RBIs in the play. And one day, Logan Davidson's going to be able to tell the kids and the grandkids that he once scored from first base on a pop out to the first baseman. How do you like that? And Jolly was able to come around from second, but the fact that Davidson drew the throw from Applin, it was a pretty good throw. It just was a little bit wide of the target. Davidson showing that speed. So Clemson scoring in all kinds of ways today, whereas Florida State has used the solo homer as their brand offensively. The Tigers have played uh, small ball to go along with some power. So a costly error, and that is the first error this season in over 360 chances for Rhett Applin, the first baseman. This one is crushed. High and deep to right, and then out like a laser for Seth Beer. The beat goes on for the Tigers, a third Clemson homer on the day, and Beer, his fourth homer in the past two seasons against Florida State, and the Tigers open up a 12-4 lead. That is number 13 on the season, and it snaps a tie all time on the Clemson list with someone named Kyle Parker, 47th career home run for Beer. And now you, my friend, are sitting in uh, ninth place, and Seth Beer is by himself in eighth place. It's not a bad guy to uh, 
I guess, lose my spot to. And Seth Beer's been awesome for the Clemson Tigers. You see him drive a ball out of the ballpark. And how many times have we said something like that? He's a tremendous hitter. And you can see he's coming into his element, getting his timing back. And just drives this one out over the over the fence in right field. The Cajun Cafe, they love him out there. And you have to feel like the pitcher, Ahern, was maybe a little bit rattled seeing what was going on behind him on the previous play in the pop-out. And Beer jumping on one right there. Last night, the fact that he struck out three times, you could just tell the frustration. But again, that was symbolic of what this Clemson lineup has done today. Losing a 3-2 to two game in 13 innings, in which they had some opportunities late a couple of times to walk it off. And now they've responded with 12 runs on 12 hits, and we're not even five full innings into this game. And they've made some good adjustments. They've been selective, and they've also just come through in the clutch. I think uh, anytime you have a team that, that has the offensive potential, as Clemson does, you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself, and they, they have had the expectations. But Monty's kept them pretty easy going, and you see them bounce back from probably a, a bad showing yesterday and to today. You know, 12 runs already on the scoreboard. You've seen some guys hit the ball out of the ballpark, and uh, Seth Beer bouncing back and driving one in the Cajun Cafe. It's nice to see. Beer now with 34 driven in on the season. So not only has everyone in the lineup been able to come through with at least one hit, but everyone in the lineup has also scored at least one run for this Clemson team. And that's, that is a rare occurrence indeed. So three more homers in this ball game today. Clemson 71 on the season. So there you go. All nine batters, at least one hit and at least one run. And as far as ACC play goes, you know, Clemson team that had been you know, putting up some runs. They'd scored nine at Virginia last Sunday. Nine in the series finale wake. Williams turning on one. And that is going to go foul. Home run distance as Williams was trying for his second dinger of the ball game. Tigers. ACC high and runs scored coming into the ball game today was 13 against Georgia Tech in the ACC opener. And they have scored 11 in a loss against Miami, 10 in a win against Boston College, and a couple of nine run games. Take another look at Williams. This ball was hit high deep down the left field line and it seems like uh, the people in the grandstands are arguing that that's a fair home run. And perhaps Monty Lee agrees, and he has gone and visited the home plate umpire, Jason Bradley. It is interesting that you can catch a ball in that left field grandstand and it not be a fair ball. It's kind of an optical illusion to an extent. This one was just hit so high, it was hard to compare it with, with the foul pole. I mean, it was clearly, you know, 50 feet over the foul pole when it went over the fence. So determining where it exited at the ballpark uh, is going to be pretty tough. So the umpires will go ahead and go to video. And last night, Florida State was 2-1 and one in replay reviews. And that one that confirmed the out of Davidson at third base in the 13th inning proved to be critical. Clemson would have been set up quite nicely and uh, that look right there. And even the angle of the camera off to the side. And, yeah, it's and not straight down the line. Yeah. You saw the ball come in. You see a Florida State or at least a fellow wearing a Florida State jersey standing up with a cap on. I mean, he's misplaying this thing, though, big time. Yeah, he terribly missed. He makes it look like it's well to his right. That, that all That's may be part of this, the grand uh, conspiracy by him. Let's see. Um, he lost it. And in I the say sun. that facetiously. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, he, he lost it in the wind or the sun. Or actually, maybe the way the wind's blowing, it actually was over there. You're going to see the ball come into the picture right now. And the question I guess I would have is, did it wrap around the foul pole and come down that way? Or did it stay like? They will tell us it is a confirmed foul ball. Williams hitting that 14th home run. His last time up, and for now, he is the team leader, one ahead of Beer, who just pulled within a home run of him earlier in this inning in the previous batter. So if that was fair, does he jog around the bases? 
on a delayed home run. That's exactly what would have happened. If it's overturned, he, that's exactly what he would have done. Starting now, from, again, why not just, you're standing at home plate, why not just have a tap <laughs> home plate? Softball but, room. You know, if, if you're Chris Williams, you want the glory of taking the, the home run trot. Ahern got that visit from Mike Martin earlier, and that might have been the conversation of, why don't you just go ahead and plan on taking one for the team today? I'd rather have uh, as many fresh arms as I can for the series finale Monday, since we still have a chance to win the series then. A 7 p.m. ball game here at Doug Kingsmore, and we will want to head on out there. And Mike Martin was, of course, showing uh, the emotions of exasperation and probably telling his pitcher to dial in as Williams able to pick up the free passes, 25th of the season. And it brings up Grayson Bird, who's taken one out in this game. Snapping a three-all tie in the third inning with a three-run blast, his eighth of the season. Now with two down and a man on. The lefty against a righty for that Monday game. Jake Higginbotham taking the hill as there's lefty-righty action in the Florida State bullpen. Higginbotham in search of his seventh win of the season when he gets the start in the ball game Monday night. And that current six-win total leads the Tiger team. Wild pitch, and the runner Williams will head down to second. So a second wild pitch for Florida State curlers in the game today. Seminoles will counter with the righty Cole Sands, who's six and two with a 4.80 earned run average in Monday's game. And a second visit of the mound from Mike Martin, who will not be standing there long with Ahern as his day will be done. And we will see a call to the bullpen. And it'll come two pitches into the at bat of Grayson Bird. We'll set the numbers for you when we come back after this. Shane Drohan on for Florida State as they go with a lefty on lefty, albeit he'll inherit a 2 0 count on Grayson Bird. And Drohan, a 6'3, 194 pound freshman out of Jupiter, Florida. Again, just a parade of first year arms in that bullpen set up as a result of a couple of key injuries they've suffered. Drohan making his first appearance and back on April 18th when he allowed two runs, both earned, and faced only a couple of batters and walked them each against Stetson. But here he is with a man on second, two men out, as they're trying to close out this fifth inning with just the three Clemson runs scored. Two of them on a really crazy situation where Applin, the first baseman, made a great play with runners on first and second, running over toward the fence down the right field line over his shoulder, made the grab. The runners, Jolly and Davidson, tagged. The throw went to second to try to cut down Davidson. It got. And I don't think it necessarily field. was a, a bad throw. The throw. No, I think it was just a little bit wide of the target, and I believe it was Salvatore, the shortstop, who couldn't field it. It went into left field, and that allowed both runners to score and. Applin, who came into the day today without an error in 365 chances, committing his first error of the year on a throw, on a great catch that he'd made, and a throw simply trying to make it a double play, and as a result, two runs scored. And Hudson with the three runs in the inning, opening up a lead to eight, their biggest of the game. So when last we saw Grayson Bird, he was facing the right-hander, Ahern, and getting ahead in the count 2-0. Now he steps in in the same plate appearance against the lefty. And strike one, and a ball fouled away. An aggressive cut from Bird. Bounce that time. Third pitcher on for the Seminoles here in the fifth inning. For the third overall in the game. Grohan, left center field. Luke coming in, and he's able to run it down for the third out in the inning. Tigers, though, adding three more. They have scored in each frame. Two in the first, one in the second, five in the third, one in the fourth, three more here in the fifth. Clemson rolling 12 to 4 after five. 
Head of the sixth inning, it has been quite the performance by the Clemson Tigers. 12 runs, 12 hits, and a 12-4 advantage on Florida State. The home run has been uh, something we've seen quite a bit of. The teams have combined for seven. Florida State, all their runs on four solo homers, and the Tigers with a three-run blast out of beer, and then solo shots from Williams, and or a three-run blast out of Bird for the Tigers, and then solo shots from Williams and Beer, and uh, also some other crazy things with Kyle Parker, Pete Yannity back with you. Now, at the outset of our telecast, we talked about how do you bounce back from the tough loss last night if you're Clemson, and for that matter, a very emotional win if you're Florida State, and Again, attacking in this lineup and uh, a Clemson team that uh, just had a whole different demeanor at the plate than what we've seen so far today compared to last night. And you can tell coming to the stadium today, the wind was gusting out to left field and all the spirits were high of, of everyone on the Clemson roster inside uh, uh, other than the pitchers, right? But uh, guys like Cal Raleigh have been swinging the bat well, uh, especially for Florida State. But it's been a story of the long ball guys hitting the ball out of the ballpark. A little different than uh, yesterday. Two of the first four batters in the game for Florida State, Jackson Luke and Cal Raleigh, delivered solo blasts. And also Reese Albert, the center fielder, his second solo homer as many games and a second by Raleigh. But there is Grayson Bird, who snapped a three-all tie with his eighth homer of the year, the three-run blast. That started a five-run third inning. Chris Williams, a shot that got out of here in a hurry to center field, just cleared the fence. And then Seth Beer following what was a pop-up that led to two Tiger runs. Hit a laser out to right field. And that, of course, is 47th of his career. And we didn't have a bouquet of flowers for you, Kyle, for the, uh, the fact that you've now moved a notch down to the all-time list behind Beer. You're now eighth, and uh, you're now ninth, and he's now eighth. But uh, nonetheless, Seth Beer with that 47th career homer to pass you on the Clemson list. And you see the comparison of catchers. And this, of course, with the backstory of the bat that Cal Raleigh at one time was committed to come to play to Clemson. Well, he ended up at Florida State. Kyle Wilkie, a year later, then Raleigh arrived in Tallahassee, got here to Clemson, and well, Kyle Wilkie has been very solid behind the plate, and especially playing significantly this year, but as a hitter, maybe not the power numbers that uh, Raleigh uh, provides, but the consistent hitting and extending his hitting streak now to 13 games. He's hitting 430 during that stretch, roughly. Tigers have a new pitcher to start out in the sixth, so Brooks Crawford's day is done. As Alex Schnell, the senior out of Milton, Georgia, is on, and perhaps Monty Lee would just as soon see him close out the final four here and rest that bullpen, which was taxed a little bit last night. Eighth appearance for Schnell. Little chopper, Cromwell up with it, on to first. And able to retire the first baseman, Applin, who after a good night last night is over three so far today. And if you're Schnell, you just got to come in and attack, throw strikes. Well, so far, Cal Raleigh has a couple of solo blasts, but they came from the left side of the plate, the switch hitting junior catcher. Hitting from the right side for the first time today since the Tigers went to the southpaw, Schnell. And that one ripped into left center field. Wharton will cut it off and hold the catcher to a single, but those swings swing so far by Cal Raleigh, and he has gotten barrel of the bat on each of them. He's locked in today. A laser beam right back up the middle. Cal Raleigh swinging the bat real well right now. Raleigh, the two homers in the game today. Team leading 39 runs batted in. End of the day, hitting 287, so a three for three ball game gets him up close to 300. When the series began, this guy, Drew Mendoza, was the only. Florida State hitter above 300. Applin's good game last night got him right at that cherished mark. He run Tigers lead, but again, enough pop in the bats of Florida State that this one could still get interesting. And on a day like today, anything can really happen. Still, uh, you know, a lot of baseball left to play. We can count it one and one. Mendoza doubled his last time up, was left stranded on the base pass. Struck out in his first at bat in inning number one. 2016. 
guy who got out of high school and that year came to college as the highest rater players of those who elected to go to college instead of going to pro baseball after being drafted. And a really good freshman season in 2017. He was a freshman All-America. He played mainly at first base last year. He's moved across the diamond this season. Behind him, good job by Wilkie, and the runner will stay at first. And we've got a catcher over there combined with the fact that it's not really a situation where they want to try to take any chances down by eight runs. Really nice job just to get glove on that by Wilkie. How did he do that? Someone uh, ended up behind the batter, Mendoza. Full of three and two. The move from first to third by Mendoza was set up so that Tyler Holton, an All America for them, who's a really good lefty pitcher, could play a lot of first this year. And he also knew that Apple, and there's a swing and a miss. Chanel able to record the strikeout. And that's two down here in the sixth. A good pitch down in the zone from Snell. Gets Mendoza to swing through it for out number two. Rafael Bornegal Jr. will be the pinch hitter for the second baseman, Durr. First strikeout recorded by Schnell. And that is the sixth for Clemson pitching. Crawford goes five innings. And he is in line to get his sixth win of the year. Allows four runs on five hits. Four of those five hits were solo home runs. Crawford's now given up eight on the year, doubling his total in that category this afternoon. But five strikeouts as part of his effort and showed that good control against the very best team in the nation in terms of drawing free passes. His time out there, he did not walk a batter. Portugal came on as a pinch hitter last night and ended up going 0 for 4. Left field, Jolly with a beat on it, just shy of the hill. And that does it for Florida State here in the sixth inning. They get a hit, but leave a man head of the bottom of the sixth. 12 4, Tigers on top. Bottom half of inning number six coming up. The Tigers comfortably in front by eight runs, but probably wouldn't mind continuing a very nice trend in this game, which they've scored in each inning. This is a top 15 battle, and you see the ACC is five in the top 15. The various polls will conflict on certain numbers, but for the most part, it's been pretty consistent. North Carolina, Clemson have been hovering in the top 10 throughout the year. You see they're ranked six and ninth, with NC State a third top 10 team. Duke having its best season in a long time already. 33 wins, and they are contending in the Coastal Division. They are ranked 12th in this Florida State team, which started the year 14-0 and has gone 18-14 and since. But they uh, are a ball club that is also obviously to be feared. Those teams you just saw will be heading to Durham for the ACC Baseball Championship May 22nd through the 27th as the tournament returns to the Durham Bulls Athletic Park. And you can win a VIP experience for two. Go to the ACC.com slash baseball VIP. The ACC.com slash baseball VIP. Kyle, of the ACC tournaments you played in, at least one of them, I'm pretty sure, was in Durham. Were you with the team the year they played down in St. Petersburg as well? No, so uh, the three I was in was uh, Jacksonville, Greensboro, and then Durham. But uh, Durham's a, a nice setup. They, they have a nice field down there and do a great job hosting the tournament. It's always super exciting to watch. Sounds pretty cool. So your freshman year, which would have been your senior year of high school, the tournament was in Jacksonville? Yeah. And Clemson won the title that year. No, no. That was the uh, year. Okay, that was – they were – was new left fielder, by the way, Skyler Fry for Florida State. And Bornegal stays in and will play second after pinch hitting for Durr. And we will suppose that Fry will go in the place of Jackson Luke. 
So in any case, though, your freshman year, you get to go play the AC tournament in your hometown. That must have been pretty cool. Yeah, well, it was uh, was pretty cool. It's Cromwell has had himself a good ball game. And that's one that got away, I think. Break ball, uh, yeah. Say, yeah. Down to three and one. It's been on all three times up. A couple of singles and a hit by pitch. A single in the first inning, coming with two outs and driving home the first two Tiger runs of the game. Count goes full. We noted that Crawford had not allowed a walk, and in Schnell's inning of work, he has not granted a walk to Florida State. They lead the nation. Last night, they only ended up in the ball game with four walks, and they didn't get one until late in the game. They went, I believe, the first nine innings without drawing a walk. Applin at first, probably still grumbling inside about that throwing error that let two runs score. But a team that has been so good drawing free passes, Tigers pitching so far in the series has done probably the best job against them of any pitching staff they have faced. The Tigers pitching staff just continues to throw strikes. Even on a day like today, where you would think it would be tough to, to want to throw in the strike zone with all the balls flying out, they just continue to attack. Drew Wharton. Doubled and scored. Also struck out and grounded out to the third baseman. Fastball over the outer half of the plate. Wharton takes for a strike. Drohan, the freshman lefty out there for a second inning. Skied behind the plate. Raleigh. And that's out number two. As we noted, Cal Raleigh getting close to 170 consecutive starts as a catcher. And that's pretty impressive. What's also impressive is how he's been swinging the bat today. And a roller that's going to stay foul. Tigers have not been retired in order in the game today. season Raleigh all 69 games of the year he was behind the plate the time Sam Hall who's one for three in the game number up the line Hall playing at second today Monty Lee raves about what a great athlete is freshman out of Hampstead North Carolina is he loves the speed and he loves the fact that he can not only put him in the outfield but he can play him at second third or short you got a roster with a bunch of guys who have that kind of versatility. It allows for all kinds of maneuvering as the game goes on. And they knew that that hole was solid defensively. I think uh, it's a pleasant surprise how he's been swinging the bat. On the right side, Bornegal, the second baseman, called off by the first baseman, Applin. And for the first time today, the Tigers are retired in order. But as we head to the seventh, Clemson looking to even this three-game series with an eight-run advantage. Head of the seventh inning, Doug Kingsmore Stadium with Little John Coliseum off in the distance and Jervy Athletic Center in the foreground. It looks like one of our technical folks at the bottom of the screen. It appears that he is going with the tap repair method on one of our very highly uh, technical pieces of equipment. And if we see him with a hammer, that will be his next course of action, trying to get that to work, whatever he was doing. Those guys right there having the time of their lives and those folks out there probably having the barbecue meal of their lives or at least a late afternoon early evening barbecue 
I wonder what's on the menu today. Obviously, it'll be something that will have a certain spice to it. Um, assuming broiled or blackened or maybe even fried is an option out there per order. Out on the Cajun Cafe in right field. I think they usually hit all three. Like Salvatore, the shortstop, 0 for 2 so far. First pitch swinging, Davidson. And he retires his competitor at short for out number one quickly here in the seventh. Just a routine ground ball to Davidson. Second straight time that Salvatore is grounded out to Davidson. Jared Heron, the freshman DH, 0 for 2 in the game. Reverse line score in terms of the hits by the teams in this game this afternoon. Last night, Florida State scoring just three runs, but they out hit the Tigers 15 to 6. Clemson so far today has out hit the Seminoles 12 to 6. Four of those six hits for Florida State home runs, but all of them solo blasts. So you would obviously see a much different looking scoreboard right now. A few of those have been with men on base. It would be a much different kind of game. And I almost get the feeling that each head coach is going to stick with the guy he's got working right now. In the case of the Tigers, the lefty Alex Schnell. Senior coming on to start things out in the sixth inning. Relief of Brooks Crawford. And allowed a hit to Cal Raleigh, but nothing more than that. Chanel's yeah, been seven. effective. And I think uh, it's a testament to the Clemson Tigers pitching staff. They've been throwing strikes. It's been a big priority. We know how selective Florida State is. They like to work counts and get walks. But haven't had too many base runners today. Tigers chasing win number 35 overall. And their 18th ACC win this afternoon. The 18th win would surpass last year's total in conference play. And a 35th win would keep them on pace as a little looper down the left field line just foul. So Heron will return behind the plate. Tigers, one of eight teams in the NCAA with 42 or more wins in each of the past two seasons. So. You get a 35th today, and you've got a very good chance, based on what the schedule looks like for the rest of the regular season, and of course into postseason play to get to that 42 mark again and significantly more. And that is ball four, so a one out walk. And the first of the game for the national leader, Florida State. This was just a, a little down and off the plate, a good take. Aaron this season drawing his fourth free pass. Here's Albert. Solo homer his first time up is second in the series and fifth on the year. And a soft liner behind second that was snagged by Davidson in the fifth inning. And Albert's been locked in at the plate. Suddenly, Schnell with the control issue, so Kyle Wilkie will pay a visit. Wilkie's trying to slow Schnell down. You have a big lead right now. You want to continue to pound the strike zone. Albert, five hits in the series. And the count goes to 3-0. and oh. Activity in the Tigers' bullpen. That's Spencer Strider, who has played a key role on weekends out of the pen. And that's ball four. Back-to-back -back walks. And Alex Schnell on the season in terms of control have been 
pretty good, just three walks. Entering his appearance, albeit in just six and a third innings. And Wolke again will make the trip to the mound. So top of the order, Stephen Wells will come up with two on and just one out here in the Florida State half of the seventh inning. Looks like Monty's going to come out and get him. And indeed, we will see the pitching change. So that visit by Wilkie was to buy some time. And Schnell, making his first appearance since April 7th, will exit. Pitching change here at Doug Kingsmore. We're back after this. Spencer Strider, 16th appearance. He has started some games on weekends. He's been used as a very effective reliever. A Tigers bullpen that has an ERA of 2.74 coming in with 206 strikeouts and 203 and two-thirds innings. And there's been a strikeout recorded so far by the bullpen, an inning a third today. So that total is now 207 for Strider. He has been among those who has led the parade with those 54 Ks and 37 two-thirds innings. And I really think this guy is going to be a big star on this Clemson pitching staff, and you could easily see him work his way into the weekend rotation sooner than later. But the kind of guy that if uh, this Tiger team is going to make a postseason run, I think he'll play a vital role in that because he has uh, really done a, a solid job. Hasn't necessarily come in in too many high leverage situations, but he's had some very clean work in the time he's come out of that bullpen, especially during the conference season. No doubt about it. And we've seen him a lot in weekend series. A guy who's been used as that long reliever. It has the potential to eventually work into a uh, weekend starting situation. And uh, a guy that I thought, you know, they may have been trying to hold uh, possibly just to have in the bullpen for uh, the Monday game. But uh, Monty Lee's not, not playing any games, especially uh, with, with the way the ball is flying today. Strider has not allowed an earned run in a relief appearance since March 17th against NC State. In starts against Coastal Carolina and Georgia, April 3rd and April 10th, in back-to-back -back weeks, he did allow five runs in nine innings of work, and all five were earned, but Strider has been effective. The freshman out of Knoxville, Tennessee, and he's going to face a pinch hitter, Cooper Swanson. Freshman out of Fort Myers, Florida, went to the Canterbury School. See a couple of homers this year. Swanson just 50 at bat so far this season. And the first pitch he sees is a called strike. It's important for Strider to establish the strike zone. He's going to be working with a fastball, usually sitting in the low 90s. He also has a breaking ball. Off-speed, 79 miles an hour. He's ahead 0-2. And a good pitch to get the slider over for a strike. Swing and a miss. And with less than two outs and a man on first, no tag or throw needed. So the strider comes right in and records yet another strikeout. Had him fooled. This was just a breaking ball down in the zone with two strikes, and he gets a swing and miss, a big strikeout. 55th strikeout on the season for Strider. Seventh for Tiger pitching today. Skyler Fry, who they inserted as a defensive replacement for Jackson Luke in the bottom half of the sixth inning, up for the first time in this series. 188 hitter and limited opportunities. Junior out of Sarasota. Goes the opposite way into right field. Let's see if they wave the runner. They will. Beer's throw will go to second. And the throw back and just sliding back in there safely was Albert. Heron comes around with the fifth run of the game for the Seminoles. It's the first time they've scored since Raleigh's second solo blast in the fourth. Take another look at that play behind the runner at second base. 
It was a bang bang play at second. Looks like he just got in there, but a good swing, an RBI single driven to right field. Second run batted in on the year for Fry, and now a dangerous batter coming up. Red Applin began the day hitting 300. Tied for their team lead with 41 walks on the year. And of course, two outs in the inning, but if Applin reaches, you've got a hot hitter in Raleigh waiting on deck, who's three for three in the game, and two of those are home runs. The last thing you would want is Raleigh coming to the dish with the bases loaded, a guy who has been swinging the bat. It'll be from the left side where he's already hit two bombs. Of course, Riley Gilliam not available for the game today after that effort last night, and that one hits Applin, so he reaches. And the bases are loaded here with two men out. I believe the local folks believe that Applin didn't do enough to get out of the way of that one earlier in the game. Seth Beer was not credited with a hit by a pitch because the umpire says he leaned over the plate. Well, was he able to hold his swing? It looks like he wants to and offer at it. I think he did. I think he did. Yeah, and he, he takes the uh, hit by pitch off the back leg. And in that case, but kind of a weird attempt. It didn't look like the swing was he intended to, to swing all the way through, his, but his bat did break the plane of the plate. That's true, and, and I think Wilkie would have had the option to ask for the appeal. That was what Kyle Wilkie was arguing, but apparently, um, maybe you can be called for a swing. third base umpire would not be an option. So now the bags are full and this is a uh, somewhat tense situation. Cal Raleigh, top RBI man for this team, the junior catcher. Nine homers on the year, 39 driven in. And two in each category today and he swings through a pitch for the first time in our ball game. And it's a fastball up in the zone. And a big cut by Raleigh. That window was blowing pretty furiously out to right field. It has died down here in the early evening. Applin reaching on a hit by pitch for the third time this season. Guide on the right side. Williams in foul territory puts it away and that'll close out Florida State and their two out threat here in the top half of the seventh inning. They do get a run, but it could have been a whole lot worse. Seventh inning stretch time. The Tigers lead is 12 to 5. Head to the bottom of the seventh here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Clemson has been in front since Grayson Bird's three run blast in the third led to a five run inning. Florida State getting one back in the top half. Upcoming for the Seminoles, of course, that Monday night 7 p.m. ball game. Here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium against the Tigers. Then they go outside of the conference on Wednesday against Jacksonville. They've got a four-game series against Mount St. Mary's. They're actually scheduled a doubleheader for next Saturday as the Mounties from Emmitsburg, Maryland, go down to Tallahassee. Uh, just like uh, Clemson will be playing outside of the conference next weekend as well. NC State is their final ACC series. And that could be very critical in terms of seeding for the tournament May 17th through 19th. And then getting ready for the trip to Durham for the ACCs. Meanwhile, after the Monday night game against Florida State, Western Carolina, which has really struggled this season, they're coming to the Kingsmore Wednesday. The governors of Austin P. out of the Ohio Valley are here next weekend at Kennesaw State, a first ever visit to the Owls campus in Cobb County, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. And then ACC closing out at Pittsburgh for the Tigers May 17th through 19th, of course. Those final ACC series for each team Thursday through Saturday in the middle of the month. Swanson, who came on as a pinch hitter, will remain in the game. And the Tigers also see Florida State and Jonathan Foster out there as the new catcher in the game. So Mike Martin pulling 
Cal Raleigh, but Raleigh's streak of starting behind the plate up around 170 games is obviously safe. Mentioned Swanson, he is now in right field. So significant changes to the lineup for this Florida State team as Robert Jolly leads things off in the bottom half of the seventh. You probably want to save Raleigh after, you know, the 13 innings the other night and then 12 runs on 12 hits. It's not easy being behind the dish on a game like today. Truly an opportunity to rest them because you're down 12 to 5 against the team that's first in the division as a very solid bullpen, even though a couple of their key guys aren't available today. It's, it's probably best just to assume this is going to end up as a loss if you're Florida State and just come back to fight another day. Well, you want to keep your players fresh. I think uh, things will probably be a little differently if Raleigh, you know, drove one in the gap in his previous at bat and then the score was a little closer. Just an opportunity where you want him to, to catch his legs and, and come back fresh tomorrow. Jolly with a second walk in as many plate appearances. Remember, he was on second base when Wilkie popped out to Applin, who made a really nice over the shoulder catch in front of the fence down the line behind first base. But then Applin throwing it into left field that allowed both Jolly and Davidson to come home in the play. So a pop out to the first baseman, allowing two Tiger runs eventually to come home. Top of the order, Logan Davidson. Singled his last time up and would come around and score. He's got a couple of hits today. Interesting. Saturday night, the top four batters in the order, three out of 21. Today, six out of 13. They're swinging the bats well. Davison lifts this one to left field. But it looks like it's going to be a routine play. And Fry just inside of the foul line. And so, a good pass by Davidson. I think he has been swinging the bat well. Just hits under this one. In a lineup that was adjusted in a few spots by Monty Lee today. And this is one of those moves he made, moving Kyle Wilkie up from cleanup last night into the number two hole. And again, Wilkie, he's flashed some power during this hot streak early in the game. He extended his season best hitting streak to 13 games, or team best for the season to 13 games, and a career best for him. But He's probably more of a line drive gap guy, not necessarily a, a thumper you want in that middle of the order slot. But he's a, he's a different guy right now. You just see his demeanor in the batters in the batter's box. He's, he's going deep into counts. He's putting the ball into play. And that's a big reason why he's in the two hole. You can find another guy to get on base for these guys in the middle of the order, like Beer and Williams. And then you have Bird, who's flashing some power. Some good things are, are can potentially happen. Wilkie ahead of the count. 2 0, hitting better than 430 during this 13 game hitting streak. Did not face Florida State pitching in the series last year. And a four pitch walk. Two walks in the inning, first and second, just one out. Here comes Beer. And a good take on a ball down in the zone. Mike Martin has worn out that path between his dugout and the pitching mound and the Florida State head coach. Talking to Drohan, and we will have a third pitching change for the Seminoles on the afternoon. We will size things up with that when we come back. Kobe Johnson, we saw him last night as the starting designated hitter, but the Florida State freshman, or I should say fourth-year junior, one of the few non-freshmen in their bullpen out of Holiday, Florida, went to West Mitchell High School, and he's now on for his 13th appearance. And all of his appearances this season have been out of that bullpen. Johnson, as we noted, Florida State suffering some injuries that really hurt them in the pitching category. He is the first pitcher brought in in this series. 
out of the bullpen by Mike Martin, who is not a true freshman. So it gives you an idea of the youth they have down there. And you can almost sense the frustration uh, from Mike Martin when guys don't come in and throw strikes. I think he'll live with, you know, the pitchers getting touched up a little bit. But when guys can't come in and really challenge these hitters and, and put them on base, that's where he kind of runs into a short leash. Johnson pitched on Sunday against Miami, won an inning and a third. Walk two did not factor in the outcome. Faced the Tigers in 2015. It was down in Tallahassee. And he pitched an inning and a third, three hits, two runs. One of them earned. And standing in is probably the last guy in the world you want to see if you're coming out of a bullpen. Seth Beer, who last time up hit a shot into the right field stands for his 13th homer of the season, 47th of his career. Beer thought he had reached on a hit by a pitch in this game. Applin will get the lead runner at second, back to first. And a Real nifty 3-6-3 double play turned by Florida State to end things here in the Tigers half of the seventh inning for Seth Beer on the season. It's the fourth time he's rounded into a double play. First one turned by the Seminoles, but they trail by seven as we head to the eighth. Head of the eighth inning, Tigers up 12 to 5. You recognize the gentleman on the right, the Tigers' former longtime head coach Jack Leggett. As we noted last night, he's now working with USA Baseball, coaching a team of really elite players who are rising seniors in high school and, and guys who are 17 or 18 years old and they'll within a year of uh, being under his tutelage end up as first round draft picks and last night right after the game Jack Leggett among the first to go down to the field and congratulate his friend and his former counterpart Mike Martin and the last time Jack Leggett coached against Mike Martin the Tigers swept the Seminoles in Tallahassee so I guess so uh, you could say uh, Jack got the uh, the last bragging rights uh, in the many games and we were talking about it before the game you figure they probably won each against each other between 75 and 100 times so they faced him at least three times every year in regular season play plus numerous times in postseason play and they coached against each other probably what on 21 22 years I'm not sure if Jack ever faced Florida State when he was at Western Carolina surely did not go against him when he was coaching Vermont but uh, probably 75 to 100 games coached against each other and I would think among Mike Martin's opponents that's one of the coaches and he sweeping saw the most Florida frequently. State in Tallahassee yeah. is a pretty difficult task and a lot of really good players and really good ball games between the two absolutely Drew Mendoza the sophomore third baseman one for three in the game a double but two strikeouts on either side of that Strider has been one and one. A big cut from Mendoza on a fastball on the inner half of the plate. The ball that misses off brings the count to two and one. Goes three and one and goes out of Mineola, Florida, went to Lake Mineola High School. 884 OPS coming in, having a good sophomore season. And a walk to start out in the eighth inning. So Seminoles went nine innings. Last night didn't draw their first walk until the 10th inning. And they went until the seventh inning today before getting a free pass, but that's now a couple of walks issued by Clemson pitching. To Florida State. And Seps Bornegal, who came on as a pinch hitter in the sixth, and he flied out to the left fielder Jolly. 
Shredder is able to get the, get this one in here, a fastball that catches the plate. He sticks to the same game plan. He's trying to get it on the hands of these left-handed batters. Morning, all. Played his collegiate career at Belmont University in Nashville before arriving in Tallahassee. He's got himself a single in the right field. And the runner Mendoza will head to third. Row coming into second, first and third, and no one out. And Bornegal delivering the base hit. And that is now eight hits in the game for this Florida State team. There was a good swing on a fastball over the plate. He's able to drive it into right center field. Mike Salvatore passed two times up, has grounded out to the shortstop Davidson. He lined out to the third baseman Cromwell in the second inning. First pitch swinging, and it's strike one. Twelve, twelve, and zero for the Tigers. Five, eight, and three for Florida State. And that third error. Pretty critical because it allowed a couple of runs to score and that one getting away from Loki. Here comes Mendoza from third and the throw might have gotten him, but Strider unable to reel it in. So a six run in the game for the Seminoles and on the play, Hornigal moves up to second. And still no one out here in the eighth. A breaking ball that gets away from Kyle Wilkie. A close play at the plate. The throw a little off and Strider wasn't able to snag it. Both runners will advance and a run scores. Scored a wild pitch. I would suppose if you could have made the judgment that the throw by Wilkie to Strider would have gotten the runner to play, it could have been scored an error, but we've not seen that as the case. So the wild pitch, though, allows Mendoza to come home. And a 1 1 count again. One of the dirt the Wilkie has to go out and block. Here's the throw from Wilkie. Just a little off, but not necessarily a, a routine play, I would say. Bornegal, the runner at second. His dad was a major leaguer. A handful of teams back in the 90s, early 2000s. Salvatore began the day at 2:35 on the season. 0 for 4 in last night's game, so he's 0 for 7 in the series. But he did reach last night in a couple of walks. 2-2 pitch. Count goes full. A good take. A fastball up and off the plate. You want to see Strider attack the strike zone more. You have a big lead. Strider coming on in the seventh, but not eligible for the save because with such a big lead, you have to pitch three full innings in that case to qualify for a save. And so he came on with. One man out in the seventh inning. The run that the Seminole scored in that frame was charged to Schnell. And a called strike three. Salvatore thought he had ball four, but instead he is rung up and a very big first out here in the eighth inning. And a fastball in the outer corner of the plate. A good job receiving by Kyle Wilkie. And they get the call for strike three. Second strikeout recorded by Spencer Strider. Got a pinch hitter. Kyle Cavanaugh. Senior out of Winter Park. Eight strikeouts in the game for Clemson pitching. Last night struck out 12 Seminoles in that 13 inning ball game. That's ball one. 
And it misses off the plate outside. Having on the 259 hitter. No homers, four driven in this season. Looks like C's gonna come out and talk to Strider. Right now, you really wanna be aggressive in the strike zone. You don't wanna fall behind in these counts. Uh, a pretty low pressure situation. You wanna see uh, Strider come in there and, and show some command, probably just slowing him down. And you see the third season as Clemson's pitching coach. He came here with that man, Monty Lee. The Tigers head coach. Looking to get career win number 397 here in our ball game today and number 121 at Clemson. Two old pitch coming to Kavanaugh in there to pinch hit for the DH Heron, who was 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Strike across three and one. You have to be hoping for a ground ball off your strider. Just something to record an out on the board. Three one pitch. Swing and a miss. And this pitch is well located. Down in the zone on a hitter's count. Tigers is a staff. You know, 381 strikeouts on the season. And that's ball four, so first and second, still just one out. Second walk issued in the inning. And by Strider since he came on. Warnigal, the runner at second base, Kavanaugh now at first. And here's Reese Albert. We've told you about the series he's having. And Reese Albert has been hot at the plate. Two homers so far this series. A dangerous hitter in the box. Strider starts him off with a fastball. He's able to get ahead. Popped him up on the infield, and it'll be an out on the infield fly rule, so it'll be two away as Hall will make the catch. And a big out for Strider. Albert's been swinging the bat real well. He's a dangerous hitter with, with two guys on base, and they could potentially get back in the ball game. Two walks in the inning, along with the Hornigal single. And eventually led to a wild pitch by Strider, which got a run across to cut this to a 12 6 Clemson lead, top of the order. Skyler Fry. Fella at the plate. Swanson among the late additions for Mike Martin in his lineup. Cooper Swanson came on in the seventh inning with Stephen Wells, the right fielder. Swanson in the hitter's count now. Just needs to look for something he can drive. First play appearance in the series for the 260 hitter from Fort Myers. Oh, 
And the through behind the runner at first, Kavanaugh. Strider's behind in the count, 3-0. and oh. You'd have to assume at this point in the game, Swanson's taking all the way. Taking all the way, three and one is the count. And ball four, so yet another free pass. Three of them here to load the bases. That was actually the second plate appearance for Swanson. He was the first. Up to strikeouts by Strider. This time, though, the free pass leading Monty Lee to come on out and make another pitching change. So we are going to see a fourth Tigers pitcher in this game and third out of the bullpen. We'll have that for you when we come back. Carson Spires making his first appearance in the series, and he comes into a relatively difficult situation. There are two outs in the eighth, but the bases are loaded, so... With Skyler Fry coming up, and if he's able to get one down in the outfield, suddenly this thing would get a whole lot more interesting. Spires for the Tigers, his 21st appearance. Done some good work out of that bullpen this year. And the number of strikeouts matching the number of innings pitch for the Tiger out of Greenville. Spires. Appearing in two of the three games in Charlottesville last weekend. Saturday went two innings, allowed a hit, and struck out two. Sunday faced just one batter and yielded a walk. Inspires is a guy who throws a two seam fastball that's going to run into the hands of a right handed hitter. Usually sits around 89 to 92. Also has a slider. Probably a guy that, that Monty was hoping to keep fresh to, to maybe stretch out tomorrow if it was necessary. But unfortunately had to go to the bullpen pretty early today and uh, not taking any chances with a six run lead and the bases loaded. Fry a 188 hitter as he stands in. But he did single in his First plate appearance of the game in the seventh inning. And it's ball one. And he picked up his second RBI of the year. And Spires falling behind 2-0. Not a save situation due to the fact it's a six run lead, even though the bags are full. It would be if Florida State was one run closer. And Spires were then to finish out the ball game. Spires is able to get a, a strike over with a fastball. The counts two and one. We've talked about it in this situation before this time of the day. It, it does become more difficult for the hitters with the way the shadows begin to creep around home plate. But here Fry is one pitch away from picking up a second RBI. He's coming into the game in the seventh inning. Getting ideas to some of the shadows you're dealing with. And it's hard to pick up spin and recognize those breaking balls early. And ball four, so the Seminoles did not draw a walk until the seventh inning. That is their sixth. Over these past two frames, a second RBI, and it's now a five-run game, a 12-7. to seven. And a fastball that was just up in the zone. Clemson's been so good at throwing strikes and commanding the strike zone. Things have fallen apart this inning, though. Here's Applin. Hit by a pitch his last time up. Oh, 
Center field and deep Wharton going back and shy of the hill. He'll put it away for the final out in the inning. And Florida State leaves the bases full. They do score a couple of runs heading to the bottom of the eighth. The Tigers lead is 12 to 7. Tigers a five run lead here in the home eighth. Clemson going for a 68th win all time in the series against the Seminoles looking to even this thing up and try to for the second straight time at Doug Kingsmore get a series victory having taken two out of three against the Knowles here in 2016. Had a good crowd here at the start of our 4 p.m. game. Many have hung around and those folks strategically some of them brought their sunglasses sitting out there in the left field stands. And if you're back toward the infield you're in the shade. And it's been a good day for baseball. An exciting offensive game. Chris Williams. One of three Tiger home runs today. First pitch swinging over the reach of Salvatore, the shortstop, and a second hit in the game for Williams, and he's been on base every time he's come to the plate. He's reached now on a single at the home run. He's gotten on base on a walk, a hit by a pitch, and an error. And a good swing from Williams. A nice piece of hitting, a sharp single to left field. Grayson Bird, his three-run homer in the third inning, gave the Tigers a lead that they have held since and kind of also added some extra life. Clemson had trailed 2-0 after a half, tied it up with a couple in the bottom of the first, but you still didn't kind of feel like they totally shaken some of the doldrums from last night. They did take a lead in the bottom half of the second, 3-2, but that was quickly erased on another solo home run by Florida State. When Albert took it out of the park in the third, but then Bird with that blast sent the Tigers on to a five-run inning. Clemson scoring at least one run in the first five innings of this game, and in fact, multiple runs in three of those five innings. At the time of the Bird home run, Clemson was a team just looking for a big hit. They left guys on base all day yesterday. It was nice to see him come through in the clutch. Hornigal is only play as to first. That'll move up the runner Williams with one out. Similar play last night in the 13th, and we saw Durr throw basically a ground ball over to his first baseman Afflin, and that almost proved to be disastrous. But on the play, that the ball got away from Afflin at first, Davidson tried to advance. The first over to third and what was a chopper by beer and of course it was called out and the replay uh, was upheld so the Tigers only had a man on second in that 13th inning trailing by a run instead of second and third as Patrick Cromwell stands in two out of three on the day is also reached on a hit by a pitch it was his two out single in the first they got the scoring going for the Tigers as he drove home a couple He's able to hold up right here on, on a fastball up in the zone. And those shadows are creeping in. It makes it difficult when you're standing in the batter's box. And boy, doesn't it? And at the same time, you know, you never hear really talked about from this standpoint. Is there any kind of, have you ever heard pitchers tell you about any kind of depth perception as they throw behind the runner, but Williams dives back? And what the depth perception from the pitcher's standpoint, because he's used to, dealing with consistent lighting, but he is pitching, especially when the pitching mound is totally in sunlight and the about 40 feet on in is in shadows. I think for the most part, the pitchers love the shadows. You see it a lot of a lot of fields early in the game where it's tough to pick up kind of at that twilight start. But it seems to always be an advantage for the pitcher. It makes it difficult to, to pick up breaking balls if you're a batter. Raise that batting average back up over 260. He has played some fine defense in the first two games of this series. Another throw back, and that one hits Williams, but doesn't get far enough away for him to advance. A 
Williams obviously drawing the attention he of the perfect stolen base percentage this year at a thousand three out of three for the Tigers first baseman apparently perceived as a veritable speedster by this Florida State team obviously they're not really concerned about him stealing a base but instead trying to keep him close so he can't score on a single to the outfielder especially one that would go to left field or left center. And Cromwell down on strikes for out number two. And is the first time that a Tigers batter has struck out since the starter Carp got two on strikes in the opening inning. And it was a good change up down in the zone. He gets Cromwell to chase. And a nice pitch from Johnson. Just joining us. Each batter in the Tigers lineup has at least one hit and one run scored. Drew Wharton's double in the third inning led to him coming home. There you see the change up again. Sam Hall with a double and a run scored and also a fielder's choice RBI. And waits on deck. Wharton gets into one to left, but Fry back on it, reaching up and making the catch. And a nice play to recover. Looked like he'd lost that momentarily, but Skyler Fry. Pulling it in. So a noisy final out in the eighth inning off the bat of Drew Wharton. Tigers will go to the ninth looking to seal the deal up 12 to 7. Head of the ninth inning. Tigers 12 runs, 13 hits, no errors. Florida State, seven runs, eight hits. They have committed three errors. And Clemson trying to even this series and improve to. 35 and 12 overall, 18 and 8 in the conference. Florida State would fall to 32 and 15 and 14 and 11. And Tigers at home coming into the ball game today have been doing really good work. 21 and 6 on the season. Florida State 9 and 7 away from home. Of course, interestingly, Florida State is Jonathan Foster, the backup catcher, will come up for the first time of the game. The only road games they play outside of the state of Florida are inside of the ACC. All the other road games they play because you have so many Division One schools that that can also help your RPI because a team like UCF or obviously the University of Florida, Stetson, a Florida Gulf Coast, Jacksonville schools like that are pretty good programs to go play among the many in that state. So they only have left the state of Florida this year to go play ACC road series. Now they did have to travel all the way up to Boston for one of those. And you're always going to get the good weather and playing some good competition doesn't hurt. Foster doesn't see a whole lot of time because he backs up a guy in Raleigh who plays every game behind the plate, but he has been an effective pinch hitter for them, and he skies one to left. Long run for Jolly. He'll get there, and that's out number one here in the ninth. Charlie's able to run this one down. A breaking ball from Spires. That's just lifted to a shallow left field. Drew Mendoza walked and scored his last time up in the eighth. Has a double and a couple of strikeouts in the game. Fourth pitcher used right side. Williams Spires covers three one on the put out and two away here in the ninth. Williams is able to get around this ball and make the flip to Spires. A routine ground ball put out. So it's up to Rafael Bornegal. 
third plate appearance. Singled and scored his last time up in their two run eighth inning, in which they left the bases loaded. So it could have been a whole lot more for them and they were given a whole different feel to this ninth inning. But Carson Spires, the fourth Tiger pitcher used in the game, now just two strikes away from closing out the victory, which would go to Brooks Crawford and improve the Tigers starter to six and two on the season. Five innings of work today in which he allowed four runs all on solo homers. Ooh, quick pitching that time and that's going to be called a. No pitch because. And we've seen it so many times this year with Spires that that exact call that they. So he doesn't come set. Monty Lee is going to come out and get clarity. He's probably going to say the exact same thing. I've come out here so many times on this call, and yet other times it's it's allowed. But and I don't know. This is the wrong call, and uh, it's happened multiple times. You, you see this uh, delivery a lot in uh, professional baseball. It's a completely legal pitch when sure. there's no one there's on base. There's no one on base. You're not deceiving anybody, and the. Banner should be ready for the ball to be delivered. And the so umpire, I mean, he was watching, uh, yeah. ready. Um, yeah. I mean, this this should be allowed. The batter has no control over how or how fast the pitcher wants to get into the plate. So, if he had, if he was going from a windup, there are windups that are a very quick step. I mean, there's no reason that shouldn't be allowed to be a pitch. Regardless, it, and, the ball was off the plate. So, yeah. uh, so it, it's not like they missed one, but but yeah. still. Uh, you think they make an adjustment eventually to right field beer going back and halfway up the hill. He'll squeeze it for the final out and the Tigers able to get a win to even this series an offensive show by a Clemson team with struggles with the bats in game one Saturday night, but they bounce back in fine fashion with a 12 to 7 victory. So the rubber game coming up at 7 p.m. tomorrow night between the Tigers and Seminoles and with the victory. Clemson increasing its lead over third place Florida State once again to three games in the ACC Atlantic. Quite the bounce back effort by the Tiger team today.